the Prison City Podcast. When the bars go up, you're officially locked in. Welcome to the Prison City Podcast, guys. We got a, a, a fucking amazing show here for today. We're going to talk about baseball cards and the best um, home run hitters in Major League Baseball history. Um, this has just been a topic that I've always wanted to talk about. And Mahomes is, is a little bit of a professional in this area. So um, I'm going to go to you first, Mahomes. How do you feel about tonight's topic? I'm excited, man. Um, big baseball fan, big home run fan like anyone out there is. And I, mo- I recently, probably about three years ish ago, started dipping my toes into the to the card game. Not like a ton, really. I'll do some auctions probably once every few months. So how 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 was how was that? Because um, uh, NFTs and stuff are, are big, and um, um, NFTs are kind of piggybacking off the uh, baseball trading card industry. So how how big is baseball cards now? Because I've had a lot of entrepreneurs tell me to invest in baseball cards. It's crazy. Like from even from when I first dipped my toe in like three years ago to what it is now, these, I do an auction. Um, I'm in a Facebook group is actually where one of the auctions I do is every bid starts like minimum a dollar and you'll get some of these graded rookie cards for like Joe Burrow that end up at hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. And people are just baking like cashing in on, it, you know, and it's almost, I would compare it to like a much less crazy money amount of crypto because people are buying at a certain amount holding and then like joe burrow tones turns out to be joe burrow and then this year his cards are going worth 10 12 times as much so for me it's it's more of like when i you know like it was kind of it harkened me back to kind of like a little kid thing um and it was just like man these i think this is really cool and it's also for me i go after teams like I don't necessarily go after like big whales like Joe Burrow or Kelly will think this is hilarious, but this time last year, two of his cards were going for five, six hundred, seven thousand dollars. Sometimes it was an on on card autograph. Um, and then you know, his market's obviously tanked. But like for me, I just I like the teams that I like, and so I want to get stuff that I think is cool, and then who knows, maybe down the road sometime it'll be worth some money for my kids. But for me right now, it's just more a hobby honestly they're, um because it's, it's an asset as the rich like to call them they're their assets so what would you say if somebody has uh, an original nft of an alien shot in red gate and the opening bid is five hundred thousand dollars would you say to hold on to that for a little bit what i tell them is i tell them to print it out into a trading card and make it a one of one and then have an on-card autograph and then see how much they could sell that for and compare it to the NFT. Yeah. And we're talking about Redgate, the Redgate alien here shot by Don Bromley. He was on our, our podcast last week um, with the Redgate film and everything else. He His opening offer for an NFT of that uh, Redgate alien was $500,000. And a lot's changed since then. We have a TV show deal in the works. Um, I'm going to pitch the film in Miami here in two days, and it, it's going to be really, really big. So, on to the rest of our panel. Kelly, what do you feel about baseball cards? We have a shitload of baseball cards in our garage. Maybe we should go in there, and I bet they're worth quite a bit of money, to tell you the truth, because they've been sitting there for like 10 years, 20 years. Yeah, I'm ex- really excited to see how the twists and turns of this uh, week's podcast go. Um, yeah, Don Bromley, I do want to say he was on the podcast last week, and uh, apparently he never left because I just kicked him out of our house. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. We got a shit ton of baseball cards. Jim Tilly left like a couple of boxes down in our little shoe rack downstairs too. So I bet you there's some fucking gems in there. And I never really knew what an NFT was till Pat and Don told me last week, but I think I was pitched an NFT like investment opportunity at uh, a bar here in Deer Lodge just a year ago. Some guy came up and, you could probably tell me if this is what you're talking about, Pat, but like he, they sell memorabilia and helmets and stuff like that that are autographed or whatnot. And they were trying to get me involved with stuff like that. But um, it was funny because I was really drunk just saying, oh, man, totally. I'm super interested in this investment. Let's do it. Next morning, I woke up. I'm like, I'm never fucking talking to that guy ever again. <laughs> 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 we talked for like two hours at the bar. <laughs> What's, well, so I don't, don't want to. I don't want to get into it too much because I have, I've dived in, dive, dove in, sorry. It's that deer lodge education. Uh, <laughs> I dove into this a little bit. And so like 
me and my brother used to our reward for behaving in church for a long time was we would get if we were good in church we would get baseball cards or football cards or basketball like whatever and so i can't basically like the 90s era of cards they were printing so many that there's only like a handful that are actually worth a shit oh like, really you know, they just printed so many so now what's changed in the industry lately is and i'll show some examples later but like they'll do numbered cards is a big thing so like i have one that's like 15 of 50 so there's only 50 of them printed at all so that's what drives up the price whereas let's say you have like that michael jordan when he's on the white Sox card well there's like 25 30 000 of those printed they're worth 20 bucks maybe you know yeah and and I had that with um the uh I go back to the the Pepsi challenge back in the day with the Pepsi cans the Pink Flamingo challenge and I had happened to have that one individual can that was worth everything and I lost it in a fucking hotel room in California but yeah when you have that one fucking can it's pretty damn hard to find another version of that can it's pretty fucking hard um so we cut to Matt what do you think about this. Um, I think it's, I think it's a great subject here. Going back to Don Brownlee. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> so I just want to do a shout out to Stafford. Stafford looks like he's going to get his first win. That's why the jersey's up there. That and I couldn't think of anything else to go along with this. But now that we're talking, um, yeah, I'd say trading cards was all a big part of our lives growing up. Uh, when I was in high school or something, I put together a, a collection of cards i like like uh barry sanders rookie card and i have a kobe bryant rookie card and a bunch of others that i finally just pulled up a couple weeks ago at the folks house and and now they're uh rested (laughs) under my bed i shouldn't tell people though but i'm saying like the more (laughs) you hold on to those cards uh obviously the more they're going to be worth because that's like with everything i don't know why you'd give them up for anything but I want to say the most famous card out there for our viewers and who else, if you didn't already know this, is the Honus Wagner card from Pittsburgh from the 19, early 1900s, maybe even the 1800s. And the reason that card's so famous is because, like Mahoney said, there was only a certain amount printed of this certain card because it was in tobacco cans. And that's how kids got it. And the guy's like, I don't want it to be a tobacco product and promote this. So that's why that card's worth like. What do you think that's selling for? A couple million at least nowadays? Yeah, I'll Google it real quick. Um, it's it's usually always the highest like selling one. Um, I can tell you, so I looked up the phrase because I couldn't remember um, exactly what it was from the late 80s to the mid 90s. And they call that the junk wax era in sports cards because they just produced in bulk so many of them. So there's just a few. So the last time it sold, it was sold for $6.6 million. Holy uh, fuck. I was wondering what it was. Holy fuck. Jesus Christ. That is crazy. Well, yeah, you have um, a few examples you want to show them, Hones. Uh, let's, let's try to get those out earlier here in the show today. Yeah. I want to see some of your examples. So I'll show. <laughs> I got some here, and I'm trying to – not sure how good this camera is. I got kind of a, a glare going on here. So this is – uh, as you can tell by my hat, I am a Matt Ryan fan, and this camera is not doing much justice to this. But this is this is 15 of 50. I mentioned that. So there's a couple different variations. So you'll see here, that's Matt Ridley. Uh, Matt Ridley. Ha! This is Calvin. Calvin Ridley, Matt Ryan. And so this one is what they call an on-card autograph. His autograph is right here on it. And then this is... It's got a cut of his jersey. This, there's a huge difference. And this is how people are getting kind of scammed on this. It's really, really important that you know that if you're bidding on something, this is game worn. So this jersey right here, Matt Ryan actually wore in an NFL game. This right here is cut from what they call a player worn jersey. So he wore this in a photo shoot and then they cut, you know, cut it out in different parts. But it's, it's less valuable because it's not game-worn, but it's more valuable because he autographed it. And wow. so Panini, really, really good. Another way to, like, so stuff that's – so this is a card that's from the Junk Wax era, but this is another one. This is kind of how you get into it. If it's graded – so this is uh, basically from A-Rod's first 
full season. He wasn't, it's not a proper rookie card and you can't tell super good because the camera work kind of sucks here, but this is another on-card autograph from Alex Rodriguez, but it's graded. So you'll see when you bid on these things in this, like this. So this is graded in 8.5. So, so Mark, 10, uh, 10 is like who's, mint. Who's the main company again, who grades that? Like, is uh, it so Beck, there's, there's, Beckett or? This one that I'm, that I have here, this Alex Rodriguez from 96, that's aut autographed the on-card auto that I, I keep talking about. That's a Beckett. There's a ton of them that do it. Beckett's like, Beckett's, yeah. Beckett's one of the number one ones. Yeah, right? like I said, you know? it's it's pretty tough to get a high grade on. No, I'm, on I'm, there. no, I'm I'm super I'm so happy you prepared all this for this uh, episode. To tell you the truth, this is, this is really great stuff. You know, can't wait to talk about this for the next uh, ninety minutes. Um, <laughs> you live in your Mahoney, fucking... Where did you, <laughs> where did you uh, where did you buy those at, or what, how did you get those? So let me. I guess I'll I'll give him. Uh, PSA is the other one that's PSA grade, basically like, hey, PSA graded. So let me, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go to my Facebook and I'll just tell you, like, um, so weeklycardauctions.com is this group I'm a part of in Facebook. Um, so I got, so there's a couple different sites that I check out all the time. Um, Weekly card auctions, I got this Matt Ryan, game worn. Again, look for game worn, not player worn. Game worn is worth way more. Um, I got this one from a site called uh, check out my cards and basically you can go on to check out my cards and look up anything you know kelly dan marino dan marino rookie card you can look out and people have all the different variations and it's basically like you can see how much it's selling for and you can buy it so that's check out my cards and then i got this one there's a place um nearby that has a ton of stuff like that that graded alex rodriguez autograph there's there nearby it's a sports store where like autograph memorabilia and sports cards has kind of blown up and this is probably like eight or ten years ago you guys have been to my man cave i got a bunch of like yeah yeah a bunch of stuff a bunch right? of cool so stuff i went so, out there and started kind of gathering stuff from them not really again it was more so just like as a kid i always thought it would be cool to have autograph stuff and i finally was able to have money to like do it um, so and then so it's Mahoney, kind of turned into a thing so, um, so my uh, prized possession that I haven't gotten yet, and I had I could have got a great price on it, like back when I got out of high school and shit, like right when I was first starting college and all that. But a Michael Jordan rookie card. I know you can still get those for a couple thousand bucks, depending on the rating. But that's always like been my fuck. Sorry, yep. uh, 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 Pittsburgh Penguins are losing to the Vegas Knights. If anybody knows how bad I hate the Vegas Knights, um, that's a legit reaction there for me. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go to that game. I fucking hate the Vegas Knights. Sorry to cut you out there, Matt. What were you saying? I was just saying, then, like the the pinnacle of the uh, the one I want in my collection is that Michael Jordan rookie card. And so, yeah. there's just to give you an example. So the Jordan rookie from Fleer, which is obviously for people who are familiar with it, it's a it's a trading card company. That one ranges anywhere from uh, six thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. The five hundred thousand dollar one is a graded ten card. So there's someone selling it for five hundred thousand dollars on holy eBay, shit. Right? And, and that's someone the one. And that's the one where the picture of him, like I know it's cliche, but it's like kind of dunking it. Yeah. Where it's like 86. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that's fucking, the one. Damn, I want that one. That's fucking crazy. Kelly, what do you think about all this? Yeah, I just think it's fucking insane <laughs> <laughs> that what people will, um, that there's a market for this in the first place. So, like Mahoney, you've bought obviously some stuff or won some stuff at auctions. What do you ever plan on selling that stuff? Or is it kind of something you're just going to hand down to the next, to your kids and shit? I mean, like it never started as a thing that was going to be because when I when I got into this, the market didn't like hadn't taken off yet. This was much more of a man. This would be kind of cool to like round out my man cave or these are players I like or this is stuff I think would be cool. Like if I was a little kid, I thought this would be cool to have. Honestly, that's that's kind of how it all started. Um, but there's certainly there's some of it now, like that Alex Rodriguez. Like that's a good example. He's obviously like kind of a lightning rod, but I have a number of Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cards that um, 
I bought actually a long, long time ago. First ever MLB game I went to, my grandma brought me out in 1996 to the Kingdom. Me and my brother. Holy shit! She, she took us down to um, Pike's Place Market, and they had this card shop. And this guy was selling like the real, real like expensive ones now of uh, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cards for like five bucks a pop. So me and my brother bought like this was back when I had to do you know my chores to get an allowance so i spent like the 25 bucks i had on a few griffy rookie cards that are worth a ton of money now you still have those you still have those yeah um so i'll probably sell those at some point they're actually two christmases ago after kind of the market blew up um my brother and i went through our stuff my parents put it luckily they were smart enough to keep it in a safe place of like our card collection so we have some we have some really cool stuff and then we have some stuff that we thought was cool that is kind of from that junk wax era. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if it gets to the point where like it's worth enough money, I think the money would be a lot cooler than it looking cool in my man cave. <laughs> That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. We're, we're well, talk, we're, we're, again, sorry, go ahead, Kelly. I was just going to say, we go on this camping trip every year and Mahoney's given us or brought up a lot of memorabilia, um, you know, that he's put out the to win for prizes and stuff. And you've had some gnarly fucking stuff that you brought up there. And, uh, you know, you told the Mike Trout story last week <laughs> and uh, I'm just usually like, well, oh, cool. Signed baseball bat by the whole team or whatever. But now actually seeing that stuff back in Deer Lodge, when we bring it back, I'm like, this should be like fucking hanging above our fireplace or some shit. Like you brought some very cool stuff up there. So me, um, yeah. And the funny thing is me and Kelly, uh, at one point we got a signed Mickey Mantle baseball uh from the i remember that yeah from the and, and from the me and me and kelly fought to the fucking death over who actually oh he gave it to me I, he gave it to me or whatever and we fought to the death and now it's like fuck lick my balls with that thing right now you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good analogy though, yeah <laughs> um so i would say uh mahones um when it comes to all this baseball stuff I guess my biggest question to you right now is how does this all relate to the pyramids? Well, and see, I'm <laughs> glad you asked that because what a lot of people don't think about is so Honus Wagner, the way his batting stance was, um, he had an open stance. And if you look at it from a certain angle, it is actually a pyramid. So the bat's up high, his legs are out this way, and that's where he generated all of his power. And a lot of people think the pyramids or power plants for ancient Egyptians. So it all kind of comes back and there's a good reason. Like it's not so much tobacco, it's the pyramids that make it so valuable. And obviously, you know, I don't even need to get into the Illuminati aspect. <laughs> so Mike Freeze has joined the show. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, we, we weren't gonna, um, <laughs> the, the show has changed a lot. I feel really bad here actually now. I actually feel like really bad because Mahone's clearly had an entire episode planned around baseball cards. I I did it more as a joke. I didn't think he'd he'd take it this seriously. Um we're gonna keep bringing it back to help out. And uh (laughs) we have uh Mike Freeze joining the show here. And tonight's show is actually going to be about the pyramids and Bigfoot. And Mike Freeze is our pyramid (laughs) and Bigfoot uh guy here. Uh Mike. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Welcome back to the Prison City Podcast, man. I uh, see. Now he played a joke on me. He told me this episode was about baseball cards. So it's like, <laughs> what the hell, man? Mike, <laughs> what do you know about Honus Wagner? I I know that if you have an original, you should probably make an NFT, like you're going to do with Esteban. Hey, you know, it, it's funny. Like, uh, I asked Mike about pyramid stuff and Bigfoot stuff. I asked him to send me some stuff so we could put it on this podcast today. Um, uh, Mahomes, I've never been sent so many dick pics in my life, <laughs> yeah, like literally, right? <laughs> so, we're on here, we're going to talk about Bigfoot, the pyramids, how it all ties together. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, so um, uh, I guess is I, I think we should start with where everybody stands on Bigfoot because now that Redgate and you have Don Bromley in your lives taking you in, in into new uncharted seas and there's soon going to be 
all kinds of paranormal people all over your uh, your zip code snooping around. Um, Bigfoot ties into to the to this community a lot, uh, especially around Montana. Um, yeah. um, so every yeah. podcast I go on when I talk about aliens and Redgate and stuff, they they ask me about Bigfoot constantly. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, the the obsession with Bigfoot is insane. Now, uh, Mike, you sent me some stuff here on Bigfoot. Um, do you want to go over the original video you sent me, the Patterson film? Yeah. Well, yeah. So, you know, I'm not an expert in any one thing. I, I've just always been interested in this stuff. Uh, I, I learned about the Patterson film when I was in high school in the 90s. Um, my dad, you guys, some of you might, now you guys are probably a little young to remember my dad teaching in, in high school. He substitute teacher uh, for your dad once a few times, like in the history, what, you know, history class. But my, He's talking about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had a whole, whole class on, on Bigfoot. Um, so no, but he, he wrote a lot of books on like paranormal, uh, like Christian paranormal stuff, like the stigmata. And, and so he, your, he your dad, yeah. Yeah. And, and by the way, your dad was a, a very brilliant guy. He made it on to what uh, the late night show with David Letterman. Well, he was on the Donahue show. He was on like, um, you know, history channel, uh, uh, all that stuff. Just talking about like religious phenomenon, but you know, he would always buy these books like UFOs or like, you know, just, just, you know, of course watching unsolved mysteries and all like all that kind of shit. But so, yeah, the, the, the Bigfoot thing was always something that I was interested in. And, and there was always, um, you know, there's always been talk of it. And so the Patterson film is the original, or that, that was the biggest thing that people had in the 70s. I think it was shot in 72. And it's and it's that famous like so, shot yeah. of the ape like looking back, you know, and everybody yeah. thought, oh, that's just a guy in an ape suit, right? So Mahone, do you know what the Patterson film is about? It sounds like it's about Bigfoot. And I don't want to oversimplify it, but it sounds like it might be about the the one that is the guy in a suit and he turns around and then and continues to walk away. <laughs> yeah, you pretty much got it yeah so um i'm going to show you the patterson <laughs> film here pretty soon here um but uh my freeze just a little bit uh background on the patterson film your thoughts on it um wh where did this take place how did how was this fucking thing because again he, uh mike before this podcast told me it, this is like up there with the jfk shooting film like it's the same fucking uh realm in that sense where you know, this, uh, what, 16 millimeter camera was shot and it, it's bizarre as fuck. So tell me some background of this. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, if I said it was on the same realm as JFK, I, I, I misspoke. I mean, it's definitely, it, it's in the same realm in that it's, uh, uh, you know, shot on this 16 millimeter film. It's, it's kind of like, it's a it's a big mystery um what had happened as far as i know is that this patterson guy was up there uh oh sorry not to cut you off uh mahomes can you not slam your beer as hard there it took away the shot from mike freeze uh thank you <laughs> um sorry i didn't hear that over my thoughts of you telling you to go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> A beer sounds like a good idea. Um, well, yeah. So they were investigating these footprints, and they were investigating all these stories or these. Uh, I, I bet you there was some sightings of this creature, and they went out to look for it. And they were backpacking for like days, and they didn't see anything. And then uh, the story goes that uh, they were they were on horseback, you know. And this is like in the I think it was late '60s, something like that um i think the guy died in 72 I'm, I'm not sure but uh uh anyways they saw this this thing walking and he had that camera and he was on his horse so he got off and he managed to get those <clears throat> those shots and like i said the first time i saw it i would i just thought oh that's that's a guy you know but there's people that break it down and um that video that you have pat is is somebody it's you know one of many thousands of people that break down the way that it walks and the 
the way its arms are and uh you know how consistent it is with other people yeah, it's, it's very consistent um so how would you if this was a baseball trading card mahomes what would you say this ranks up there with like a ken griffey card <laughs> well you know it's funny because i'm actually i'm while he's talking i'm reading through because i've seen that i'm i'm not like not curious about it so i've seen the stuff i've watched history channel stuff on it and it's much like everyone in this world i'm i'm like a total fucking wishy-washy pile of shit because like i full-on believe in aliens i full-on believe in ghosts and i'm like not sure where i'm at on bigfoot like kind of depends on <laughs> on where on like which day you ask so you know i'm i'm a walking contradiction much like all of us because we'll say something and then go do something completely opposite. So um, I'm not sure where I stand on this. I, it's uh, as I'm reading a little bit more, like the immediate aftermath portion is where I'm most curious because a, a lot of us, it happened so long ago um, that a and, lot of us. Um, so would you away. rather, uh, would you rather talk about Bigfoot this episode or the moon landing again? I'm I'm yeah. never on a moon landing. Episode. He actually needs to catch up on that, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny. It, it, we were talking tonight, Mike, and I want to hear Mahone's thoughts on this. Is like, um, so we're about we signed on to a TV deal. So like, you have these people that are super, super serious about alien investigations and UFOs, and we're gonna sign on to basically the biggest ufo alien investigation and it's three of us just fucking around in the woods what do you think about that Mahomes? <laughs> well what it reminds me of i can't remember the guy who made the movie but when i was in college i want to say sophomore or junior year someone came out with a like a documentary film on Redgate. like this is way yeah. prior to and so i remember going to watch it at this kind of upscale theater in, in helena montana where i was going to college sure. and i watched it, and it you could tell it was all the like stoner kids from town telling these like just total made-up stories one of them was uh a kid whose family owned the donut store and he literally drew a donut as like what he saw when he was <laughs> in the next so, um so it's hard to believe that we we're going from that to 18 years later you guys are going to make a fucking <laughs> hey, uh, full, full-fledged not only movie that's already been made but like a proper like you're gonna be yeah. on cable tv <laughs> what do you think about me i say they did a screening of that movie at the rialto here in deer lodge too and like the locals we just laughed through it oh it was horrible it was like a what comedy you, film hey, what do you think about me leading an alien investigation with kelly and some random farmhand <laughs> honestly we <laughs> talked about this in the in the last episode like none of nothing surprises me in deer lodge anymore (laughs) if you had asked me when i was younger i'd have been like yeah that's never happening but you ask me right now like of course it is like a couple years ago some old lady got kidnapped for gold bars like uh, yeah of course you guys are doing an alien investigation we're gonna base our our operations to be based on a ranch the ranch is where we're gonna start with the investigation so start with cattle mutilations and from there we're gonna track down the aliens well, and, and pretty soon, yeah, like you guys are going to know way more about this shit than I do. I mean, al- already it's like you're you're definitely uh, dipping your your whole life into this world. I'm telling you, like, our the, whole dick into the deep end. Yeah, like, right. like, like the people that you're going to meet through this, it's going to be really interesting. And, and you're, yeah. Yeah, I'll just say I'll just say Mike and 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 again I told I told every night we like 90% of our conversation tonight we we cast the female role in this. Um 90% of our conversation that was joking, but like we're gonna stumble upon some really weird, interesting fucking energy out there. Like it's gonna be a really bizarre well, experience. Some old lady um wrote to me, you know, some whoever Mahoney just brought up the old Red Gate movie documentary and he wrote to me and just said hey uh what's up with this tv show you know because pat put out a post about casting a female she goes is this like a um an arm of the movie or is this just for fun um she's kind of a, a little bit of a negative old lady i've dealt with her before and then she told me like we had to consult with the makers of that film and all those storytellers um to be able to you know, say those stories on this TV show. I was like, oh, we don't have to consult with fucking anybody because well, we like can a, make a it copyright or something. Yeah, it's, something like that. And I was like, retarded. 
was like, we, we can use any story that we want and put our own twist on it. We can tell stories that we know of, or we can um, fucking discover new shit. But yeah, she just kind of came at me and she's kind of, anyways, we, we got other beef, but uh, <laughs> it's already starting to get strange and we're only a couple days into this project. Hey man, Redgate, Redgate belongs to everybody, man. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm honestly not surprised those people came after you because like the way they put it off when i went to that show because they with actual people were there like went up and did a big intro like you would have thought they were like uh, okay and like at the end of the movie they were expecting us to like give them some sort of an award and i like audibly laughed through most of the show um so i don't think that had the exact um i don't think they really liked that but I'm not surprised to hear that, like, oh, now people are getting shined for this, so we better come out. I mean, you know how it is. That's how yeah. fucking everyone is. But Redgate is, like, those tales have are, like like I said in the last episode, in our three-man show, we did a bit about Redgate in the three-man show about the history of Deer Lodge well before that documentary was released. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be really fucking interesting. I think it's going to turn Deer Lodge on its head. Um, you know, we, every all I ever hear about Deer Lodge is what's going to, what industry is going to come back here and save this town? Mining, the train? Like, no, you guys are thinking 100 years ago. I said, why can't entertainment be that? And that's exactly what it's going to be. Hey, um, my, mining the town? No, fucking aliens. Aliens, yeah. <laughs> and we're already looking, man. We, we already have a heads up on this, you know, a, a, a several month head start but we're already thinking about like the red gate hotel the red gate cafe make this a destination where people are going to come they're going to come regardless but why not get in on the front lines of selling fucking keychains for 30 bucks a pop you i know, know. Uh, matt and matt you have some insight on that matt's idea was to do uh an entire matt's matt has um traveled the country matt has gone to um like the blair Witch. he's gone to all these different places across the country where these films are shot at and matt had a really good idea about turning deer lodge into red gate with a gift shop and all that with special hotel rooms stuff like that uh elaborate more on that matt uh yeah i guess the bottom line is like people are willing to travel for different things like when you say go cross country just to see it just to make sure you're you know you're there and you can take a mental picture of it and like yeah i was there doing it um but yeah no this town is full of freaking potential i was talking to dawn tonight i was like this is something that we could all like write off of and profit off of and it's right freaking there to the left of me up in those mountains you know what i'm saying it's so real and like Mahoney was saying you have a big legend behind it and this picture just cements it you know what i'm saying oh, oh big time completely cements it and i go to that picture and um it, it, this does have to do with baseball cards actually oh um, because you, you don't fucking know what's gonna take off you don't like things take off i don't know the baseball card industry is booming right now it's booming and can we have a fucking coming in sorry i was just no, gonna say can you imagine coming into town and we got it we already got a couple billboards you know get a couple more and you just see you know red gate red gate red gate just like wall drug or any other uh, i don't want to call the tourist trap but then you come in and we got our hotel the red gate hotel and there's just this giant alien like <laughs> you know waving or whatever i can just picture this shit right now well it's much like what we talked about years ago is just like the town needs to lean into what it is like that's, I wanted to start like a prison themed brewery. You guys did a prison theme pizza place, like lean into what it is. So now that they're going to have this new thing, like, like you said, there's no industry coming in unless like a miracle happens and they discover oil under Ted rule field, which they <laughs> fucking won't. So like lean into what you have. There's no reason to not do that because it's not like the town's only shrinking. Hey, that's insane. Least, uh, they found oil down down there someone would be winning on that field <laughs> as i say that's what i was saying <laughs> people people come down to uh montana for two reasons that's either uh, either glacier national park or yellowstone and they're either driving one way or the other and deer lodge is right smack in the middle of it right on the highway you know what i'm saying like you just gotta yeah. pull them in for give them a reason whatever. to stop give them a and, reason uh, to stop and that's why i think this this alien image is so fucking big because um uh, Mike can weigh in here as, as, as we um, look at this Bigfoot footage. It's like, man, you get footage of an alien being or a Bigfoot or anything. People go fucking nuts over it, right? Yeah, well, what you guys were just saying, though, about Deer Lodge in particular, you know, the Cutlers, 
have been doing that. I mean, you drive by Deer Lodge, you, you can't drive by it on the freeway without seeing a giant billboard that says Cutler Brothers Theater, you know, come in. I mean, it's 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 the Cutlers, it's Jerry Ann, it's Al, it's, it's you know, dozens of people throughout now, what, two decades, just, you know, building the culture. And, you know, I, I think this Red Gate thing is, is really uh, fun and interesting and exciting. And, and if it's not the end all be all, then you guys aren't going to stop. You're, you're going to be on to the next thing. And Pat and I talked about this, you know, in pretty great detail the other day. And, um yeah this is super interesting this one photo that don bromley is 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 gonna just you know break the break the whole internet with and and i say yeah man like because the, the more people that are interested in this stuff you guys are bringing more awareness to what the fuck our world really is and that's what we're going to talk about tonight with bigfoot and pyramids and it's all just curious stuff kelly talks about this all the time like you know, it's just people need to start asking why more. And Deer Lodge is one of those <clears throat> places where people get nervous about shit that is um, out of the norm and you're going to get pushed back and it's going to be a wild 2022. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. And, and so with that said, uh, my friends, I'm going to show this big foot footage really quick. So this is the Patterson uh, footage here really quick. I'm going to show this on just uh, not do the audio on it. Oh, you should put the audio on. Can you hear me? So this is the Patterson footage. There's the big foot or whatever you can see right now. He looks back. Um, again, they're gonna re they're gonna rewind it here a little bit, and you can take your own uh, perspective on this. But that that is the uh, uh, Patterson footage. So that that's pretty much it, right, Mike? Or any, yeah, I, well, I was just gonna say. Um, on that particular video, if you want to just play it for a few minutes and listen to what that guy says, because the guy talks about the way that he walks and it's just interesting to hear him talk about it. And that, that was the whole thing that made me think to share it with you. Cause I was like, Oh, that's, that's, that's really interesting. The, the way like, yeah, it's, it's only like a, like three or four minutes when he's actually talking about it, but it, but it's, it's like the physicality because the guy did, he uh, describes the anatomy in, in a way that I, I don't have memorized, you know. All right, here. Let me unplug my headphones here. We're gonna listen to the actual conversation this guy has with his his camera here. Here we go, folks. That's right. We have our own sightings here in Australia. We don't call them Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Here we call them Yowies. So let's have a look at this famous footage. And these are the things that I noticed when I looked at this creature's walk cycle. The first thing I noticed were the hands and the arm swing because the creature's hands are open until it reaches its peak swing and then they close. And they only close momentarily before opening again. And it does that at the peak of each swing when its arms swing out in front of its body. And you can see that very clearly in the video footage. There the hand is closed and then the creature opens its hands as it swings past its thighs. And all the while, the wrists are rotating. They are continually rotating. And on top of that, the arms bend. In fact, the arms bend almost 90 degrees at the elbow. Also, the hands on the backward arc of the swing move in a very unhuman-like manner. Very unhuman. When you look closely at the locomotion of this creature, it is very unique indeed especially for something so large. But at the same time, everything is fluid and the creature moves quite quickly because let's face it, it's huge. Apart from the difficulty of estimating how tall it is, you can easily see how wide the creature is, how thickly muscled it is. Nice and thick, right? So who is that guy in an ape suit? Let's look at the way the creature moves <laughs> its legs we find that it does so in a rather strange way. The creature lifts its leg off the ground with everything almost at right angles before swinging its leg out in front of it to take a step forward. And when the creature steps and impacts with the ground, you can see that it is heavy. The muscles move and quiver as they act yeah. like shock absorbers. When I looked at some of the frames that show the creature turning to look at the cameraman, 
and I compared those with apes, the similarities become abundantly clear. In every frame that I looked at, the shape of the head was practically an exact match, Ooh. especially when comparing it with a female ape. The prominent brow ridge can be seen as well as the shape of the mouth. However, there are some differences, and the major one being the nose. And although the nose isn't clear in the film footage, you can definitely see that it is more human-like than ape-like. They got that in every frame can clearly be there. seen to be thickly muscled, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like an ape's. The head is placed squarely on those thick, muscular trapezius. And as the there's a famous frame. What's the famous frame? Is it 42? Uh, that is that you're looking at. Wait, wait till he starts talking about his ass. Okay. Look at that ass. Would you not fuck the ass? As we take a look at this frame, creature <laughs> has breasts. It's a female with huge arms, huge muscular thighs, very heavy and thickly set. And just like the previous frames, the face is an exact match with an ape. <laughs> nice ass. <laughs> Exception, as I said earlier, in regards to the nose. Look at that nose, Mahones. That's definitely something. <laughs> so, is it a real creature or is it just a man in a suit? That's the million dollar question. And there's one thing that this you. This fucking guy on like Microsoft Paint, Paint or something? <laughs> just doesn't look quite right. <laughs> I'm talking about his ass now. Line here. This line in the creature's thigh. I just couldn't work it out. I watched oh, that's a nut sack hanging look at the line there, Mahomes, in the creature's <laughs> thigh. If you look at this, as a real it's coming animal, through his ass. These are wear marks from its hands rubbing up against its thighs. Wear marks. The creature walks everywhere. The arms around the elbows are touching the animal's sides. That's why the fur's all worn there. Did he staple his nuts to his leg like Steve <laughs> <laughs> the arms brush against the sides. Even the hair on the buttocks is worn. Where the hair on the buttocks, my homies. Now that's right? that's the one that gets me. This creature moves. This is not a man in a suit. This is a <laughs> real deal. This is a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Which brings me to my story. I had a conversation with an elderly man back in the eighties. Thing is pretty fucking creepy though. I was in an archery club. I told him that I wanted to go out. And That's hunt. a man in a suit in the 60s. That's pretty well done. Hunting all his life. He hunted roos, goats, pigs, deer. You want to know the strangest thing I've ever seen? Yes, I do. I was hunting with three mates. We came into a clearing. It was all rock leading to a big drop off. He said in the middle of the clearing was what looked like an ape crouched on the ground looking at something. They were his exact words. It stood up looked at them and then turned and ran for the edge of the drop-off. He said he lifted his rifle and shot it. But when they got to the edge of the drop-off, it was nowhere to be found. Years later, I, I never realized he was talking about a Yowie. Yeah, One Bigfoot night. has a strange habit of looking. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. At, at a distance and then, and then running off. So, you know, obviously... For people who are skeptics, it's like super easy to be like, oh, why is Bigfoot always blurry? Like, why isn't there any bodies? Like, you know, and uh, okay, so that the next thing, yes. Pat, is it, yes, the, all of those things. And the uh, <laughs> guy, Pat, I would say the other, the other huge one is, man, these guys were out doing a documentary on Bigfoot and <laughs> son of a bitch if they didn't just run into a Bigfoot. <laughs> man, that's convenient. <laughs> yeah i guess that's that's a big one too yeah i would say that's the biggest one in my yeah. opinion. <laughs> um but pat so the next video the guy the guy with the cowboy hat he was the guy that was there and so i think it's interesting to listen to, to just like the first two minutes and, and maybe think uh to yourself is this guy a liar or not because he sounds like like a like a genuine guy to me you know oh yeah 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 I know exactly what you're talking about. So, Mahoney, are you saying the same thing if these three guys go out and find an alien? <laughs> well, now, that's what a lot of people could say about 
but <laughs> not, not they couldn't even say that about you because you weren't actually in you weren't looking to do it and of course it's like the argument is hey this person could be like hey you know of course i'm going to talk really like genuinely from this but as i'm looking online like these guys made money from this they made a movie out of this they sold like they sold this stuff like there's a reason for them to act like it's legit because they have money on the line for it you know what i mean where Mm -hmm. you guys we essentially stumbled upon this picture of of the alien like this this totally separate things yeah and it cool though that picture's getting debated just like we're debating that fucking video is is that is that wild um I mean, um, I, I, I won't lie, though, you know, I talked about incentive for me is like uh, the movie at that point before Don Bromley contacted me, it was it was not looking very good. I'll, I'll be honest about that. And this alien f- photo that happened to take place in the area that we shot this movie on and the movie was based on true stories. It's it's really taken a different turn. I don't doubt that. Yeah. And that's I, I'd almost like to see. I'm a little disappointed you didn't have like two cuts of the movie because I'd like to compare and contrast. Me and Kelly just talked about that honestly yesterday, and we're like, um, we should honestly release a, a, a first cut, the first cut of the film. Um, and Kelly describes it perfectly. It was it was what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be this artistic. You're kind of watching it happen as it, it occurs. It's 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 an artistic film nor. Um, no, I don't know. How, how do you describe that? You know, you're watching real murders happen on tape. That's what I wanted the film to happen. Right, Kelly? Yeah, I said it was like its own genre, like it was uh, something you'd see in IMAX or something, because, you know, the film was over two hours long, the first cut, and uh, just some of the shots of the lakes and Mount Powell and the trees and everything. It was, yeah, like you were there in person. And I don't think that came across very well through the shitty projector in our um, focus group, you know, that most of them said, you know, what, what did you think of the film? Oh, it was boring. You know, um, I was telling Pat, it was funny because if this TV or sorry, when this TV show takes off and this picture gets bigger and this turns, this town turns into Redgateville, that original uh, film, that NFT that was boring to all these people is probably going to be worth millions of dollars. Um, and it's not gonna be boring to anyone. It's gonna be like, man, that's like having the behind the scenes footage of a paranormal activity or so, saw or something big like that. And Mike Mike Freeze says it uh, said perfectly to me. And again, I I, I uh, God bless Mike Freeze, because he was the guy that really took um, the direction of this film and kind of changed it into something else with Don Brownlee and everything. And he's like, you know, there's the film you write, there's the film you shoot, and then there's the film you actually edit together as the final copy. And that is so fucking true with Redgate, where... I say that before every project I do. I remind myself of that, yeah. It, it's great. You have an idea as a filmmaker. I want to do this. Um, years ago in Alaska, me and Kelly were talking about this fucking movie, and... Um, my idea was do to do a Texas Chainsaw Massacre version of Redgate. That's what I wanted to do. That's what I had in my head. Um, things changed before we started shooting. It went to uh, Tarantino's type style. Do I want to do a bunch of dialogue and stuff? To telling stories. To um, it changed to a film noir, uh, 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 voyeurism. That's what I'm voyeuristic. I wanted a voyeuristic type film where we are separate from the crew and the cast. And then it, it, it kind of over time, this whole Don Bromley thing happened. And again, uh, that's, that's when I was talking to Mike Freeze, and, and he said, uh, you guys got to fucking utilize this Don Bromley alien shit because people are going fucking nuts for it. And so we utilized well, yeah, that. That part. was right around the, the time. That was what, back in like August or something. You had showed me a first cut, but you were also showing around this this uh, Don Bromley uh uh you know picture you, and, youtube and, yeah and the youtube video the youtube video you watched yeah. you caught you saw you saw that youtube video i shot with don Bromley for fun mm-hmm. and you're you told me that that looked fucking amazing to you <laughs> yeah and I, I i told you too that like hey man like like and i had no idea what this was going to turn into you you didn't either but that's more proof as to what you're saying is that you you can't plan it out and it and it had to evolve that way naturally and and you know whether I told you or or not, it would have found its way to be what it what it what it's going to be. And you know, you and I talked a lot about it, but you you still made it your own thing. I mean, you you still did 
you know, you and Kelly went and shot more footage for the opening. And I think it's, it's much stronger. It's, it has a much, much better opening now and it leads you into it better. And, um, but yeah, the, it's so cool because the Esteban thing is separate. It's totally separate and it's somehow tied in and it's somehow, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's cause you, you, you didn't make the Red Gate movie and this is not a spoiler, but you you didn't make it about the picture, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't about that. And, and if it was alert. about that, you know. <laughs> Close your ears. Yeah. The movie well, hasn't premiered yet, sir. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but that it's makes like, it better, you know. Because it's like it's, they say on Moneyball, man, adapt yeah. or die. The more flexible you are in this world and the more adaptive you are, the easier. I mean, you shouldn't try to force anything or control anything anyways, because you're going to be given all the gifts that you need towards your goals and your projects that you want to achieve. And that's, you know, I always go back to him, but Alan Watts, man, I, I still listen to him religiously and yeah. he just says the most clear things and it just makes you feel like good. Like we're, we can just float on a fucking cloud. We don't have to go, oh shit, this person fucked me over. Well, then they weren't meant to do this or whatever, adapt yeah. or die. And that's what this film's become. And I think that's why it's going well, yeah, to. Well, yeah, I would, I would, I'd say Mike, uh, me and Mike Freeze had uh, hour long, hours long conversations about this, too. And I kept to the kill. I was like, dude, I, I think he's on to something. We should just revamp. I know we wanted one thing, but we should honestly revamp this entire thing because this alien photo and shit, it's fucking selling. And at the end, then you have to be able to sell your fucking movie. That's that's what you have to be able to do. And that, yeah. that's and, and Mike Freeze knows it's like, man, like half the battle. I would say even less than half the battle is making the movie. The majority of your battle as an independent film is fucking selling the goddamn thing. That is so fucking hard. Mahomes, you want to wait on that? <laughs> well, what I think is funny is like, and it's not just in, in creative stuff or theater, which I've done with you guys for forever. It's also like in business, which I've done separately is it's people have such a hard time kind of letting go like if i have this idea that's going to be whether it's business or whether it's theater or like it's my idea and i'm going to hold on to it and i'm going to strangle it to make sure people see it this way um yeah, just even look back at like the early shows that we did and you know to kelly's credit he he writes these he's directs this stuff and both me and pat took creative liberties on stuff that we thought hey it might be funnier if we did this and he could have just been like no do do it like my script says <laughs> and to his credit even at a young age he was like no that's funny like you know that's the kind of mind he had then and i don't even think he probably even thinks of it that way but it's like you have to be collaborative you have to like you can start with a good idea that doesn't mean it's a perfect idea and so i think that's what's really interesting is and i think almost like the older we get the more we think well i've learned about this stuff so i know this is my idea don't like don't touch it and it's hard to let that go. But I actually, one of the things I took from theater, which I think I'm, I'm really hoping that my, you know, my kids get into it is you have to learn to let go of what you think is a good idea and try something else. Um, and that's a huge rule of improv too. I want to tie this in with improv. We're all on the Dos Fruit comedy team. We've all done improv and that's, that is a rule, just not a rule, but it's, you know, just an idea, let go of your ideas. Because if somebody comes in and says, Hey dad, what's going on? And you're like, well, I'm not your fucking dad. I'm your aunt. That's in a wheelchair. It just doesn't work. It causes friction. You know, yeah. as soon as somebody sets something up, you got to let go completely of what your idea was and roll with it. And guess what? It always turns out fucking beautiful. If you uh, just allow that to happen. And, and this all well, I think up. that's, the, oh, sorry, I was just just saying, that's why we all, uh, I think, Pat, you had this idea for this film and we all just kind of bought into it. Okay, what do you need us to do? This, this, this. And next thing you know, you know, I don't think that film was that hard at all to make on, you know, for the most part. You just went well, up there and did it. And So how, how hard of the film was to make? Um, we had to have perfect weather in mountainous conditions. So, Mike, th there's a point on this film where Kelly's fucking Jeep is going up the side of a fucking cliff and I am there on the side of his Jeep, basically saying, follow my instructions. If you don't follow my instructions, his Jeep's going to roll over the fucking cliff, and he's going to fucking kill me. That That's how extreme this film was at a point at, at times. But, like, 
at the at the end of the day, though, and Mahone's Achilles, and we could all agree on this, and, and Mike Priest, like we we want to be independent artists, we want to do our independent stuff, we always want to do that, but you the sad reality is you have to be able to sell your fucking shit. You have to be able uh, to sell it. Yeah. And 100%. and Patrick, you're like naturally good at that, even though like you may not think of yourself as that way. You're I mean, you're fucking Patrick Cutler. Like we've always known <laughs> you're just this fucking like, you know, you have this like you've always been uh on another gear sometimes. And it just so happens that the world we live in now, that's exactly what it takes. I mean, look look at the 2021, like the podcast and the and the movie and the Jesus Christ superstar. I'm not saying it's just you, it's like you know, everybody, but it's like you guys are just always you're you're just throwing and stuff. And that's why I think that if the Redgate thing, uh, and I, you know, I, I'm not trying to be negative or anything. I mean, I've I've been in LA for 11 years and I I, I know how these things go. And sometimes they don't go always the way that you think they're going to go in the beginning. And this might happen or that might happen. If it all goes perfectly, great. But that'll be the first time in history it's ever gone perfectly, right? Like there's going to be roadblocks. There, there's going to be things that are going to, this or that, money, this, that, you know, this new producer you got seems great, you know, but a lot the, there's a lot of these guys out there and, and you're and you're gonna learn a lot and, you, and you're gonna have to navigate that and and but you've already got that ingredient i mean the, the fact that that you guys are already you know talking about like a tv show and nfts and like you're 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 just turning that that wheel and that is the that's it that's the secret ingredient that they don't teach in film school that they they, they've never fucking taught and it just so happens that it's it's easier now than ever to communicate with each other with social media so, with you know so no, mike I, my my point off that too is like um so some of these roadblocks you know what i'm saying like i know i know exactly what you're saying but i think some of these roadblocks we've kind of gone over before and mm -hmm. in maybe a well, smaller they're never sense they're yeah never in a stop. smaller sense it kind of got burnt so i think like us being in our you know mid to late 30s that yeah. i think we got a better grasp on it if we yeah. were doing this 10 now. years yeah. ago yeah you know yeah. something really crazy is um before i came down um from alaska and mahomes knows about this i i was studying sales and marketing like i obsessed about it and this one i'm gonna kick to mahoney is like <laughs> dude if, if you can't fucking sell if you can't fucking sell your project if you're not convinced sales and selling you gotta be able to fucking sell. You can have a completely shit project, a shit film, a completely garbage. But if you can fucking market and sell, it doesn't fucking matter, right, Mahomes? Right, hundred percent. I mean, if you can, if you, and it's a lot of, it's a lot about it. It truly is belief. If you have belief, or if you can project belief in whatever you're selling, whether it's, a, you know, a whoopee cushion or a brand new movie, like if you can project belief in what you're selling, people will gravitate towards that um and that's it's all about the person it's really individual to the person some you can teach and some you can't like if you really full-on 100 percent believe in what you're selling you can sell the shit out of it and look, i mean look, at some, look the, at some of the stuff look at some of the shit they sell on tv you like yeah, flex that's what seal. i was just gonna say man look, look at some of these fucking tv shows some of these movies on Net netflix hulu whatever i'm like man redgate already is so much better than some of the shit i've seen it's not even on the mediocre end you know yeah and um <laughs> back to one thing about like what mike was saying like you know you, there's gonna be a lot of roadblocks and stuff like that i i go about it and i think we all are at a point where i go about it where i just don't give a shit i never thought when i was a kid like okay you're gonna potentially be on a tv show where you're hunting aliens and so i'm like if this continues to work out great but if not there's going to be another opportunity there's going to be bigger opportunities and i truly believe that and if you go about your life that way one you're so much more at peace and two it's just it's just the ride is so much more fun because uh, you're not constantly like oh fuck fuck that didn't that didn't work out the way i wanted it to yeah. that never happens it's just you know that and there's something bigger on the horizon i, I would like to say though yeah uh, mike freeze and mark Mahoney taps on something when, when i get into a fucking weird ass zone i just no one's gonna fucking beat me like i don't like in 2022 i don't believe in fucking losing i'm not gonna fucking lose like i i will not lose like i, I wrote down a notebook over and over and over again it started in alaska where i'm gonna make the greatest horror film of all time 
I wrote down over and over and over again. And now here we are, 2022, and it's fucking happening. It's fucking happening, man. Because this year, this is my lucky year. This is my lucky number. It's not fucking, I'm not fucking losing. Like, this is going to be the most amazing year in Cutler Brothers Productions history. Right, Matt Cutler? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with you, man. I think you guys are definitely onto something, and I'm not, I'm not at least bit uh, surprised by it. Honestly, God, like, oh my God, this is like actually happening. But um, the, the same time, it's like, yeah, entertainment, entertainment's tough. You know, entertainment can flip on a fucking dime. You know, and we're all in entertainment in some capacity. Like Mahoney, you know, he sells baseball, but he's really – or where, wherever he does in Nebraska, I should say. Right? The College World Series. It's the College yeah, World Series. Yeah, there you go. That's what I do down yeah, there. Yeah, but I was saying, like, but for the most part, he's selling tickets for entertainment. And I think, uh, you know, that's something we've been doing well. And, you yeah. know, people see that. Like, like you hear a lot of comments, even from uh, Mike Freeze down there in Los Angeles. you like – He's, you know, you, you see you guys uh, doing what you want to do and it's kind of paying dividends. So I think, yeah, going off that route, yeah, people well, will see yeah. that and it'll pay off eventually. It was bound to happen, you know, and whether Pat did Redgate or not, it was going to fucking happen. Who knows? Jesus Christ Superstar might be the biggest fucking movie of the year. I mean, dude, you guys did a fucking bang up job with that. And a lot of people don't know about that yet because of uh, Red all the Redgate stuff, but that alone i mean it's like and and the story of that the story of how you guys did jesus christ superstar that's super interesting because the pandemic and you know you pretty much had to do it that way and it's it's like i've seen some of the footage and it's it's like wow man like like and that's the other thing too about hollywood and the one once you start talking to these people they're gonna say to you what do you got next what else you got what else you got what else you got kid and guess what? You guys got a shitload. And, and that is true. And so, um, yeah, you know, but what did you say, Pat? The obstacle is the way, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the obstacle is the way. I have a medallion called the obstacle is the way. And that is the one of the biggest medallions alive. But w- without COVID, without these things, let's, let's be honest here. Uh, I got trapped in Montana during COVID. Everything fucking changed then. We shot Jesus Christ Superstar. We started doing a digital production of that. Um, after that, I went to Kelly. And I said, dude, I, I didn't want to shoot this horror film for another year. I want to prepare for another year to shoot this horror film. But things are different. I got nothing but time in my hands now because of COVID. We'll shoot a fucking horror movie. Everything fucking changed because of COVID. Everything changed. I was, I was supposed to be in Alaska and just serving my time out there and doing the last two months in Alaska. Every fucking thing changed because of that. Everything. I think that's one of the one of the beauties of, of you guys. I kind of mentioned it earlier with Kelly and the shows and shit he writing and being open. Is you guys are always just kind of you're not like you're open to opportunities, right? Like we did a podcast with Don Bromley months ago. And how much has that changed your lives? Because we it was we were open to having him on to talk about this different thing you know yeah. uh, and there's like i said the butterfly effect of that thing goes on and on it's it's absolutely it, insane it's crazy and uh mahoney one of the people that i was listening to one of these entrepreneurs i was listening to online because I, I was listening to a ton of entrepreneurs online constantly and he said he basically he said this one thing where it's like you you know what you go out there you do this youtube video or whatever and you're like oh i got two views it it sucks like, you don't fucking know who's going to watch that. You don't know the impact of that one 100%. fucking video. You don't and, know. And I, was telling, I was telling these guys earlier, man, you got to do it for yourself and you got to love what you're doing. Um, and I think that's why we've always been successful because you think of how insane it is to buy a giant building or giant to us in Deer Lodge, Montana, the middle of fucking nowhere. Well, what's your business plan? Oh, well, we're going to get up there and uh, write little skits and stuff and do you know musical acts and hopefully people enough people come to uh you know keep the heat on and the doors open that's just fucking insane but the only reason it worked is because we loved it and we're passionate about it i'll tell you this mark my words man the second that i don't love what we're doing in the entertainment industry i will fucking walk away i don't know if that day will ever come but i will walk away i don't care what money's on the board or anything i will be done with it because life is too fucking short to be like 
well, yeah, we got this deal, but I fucking hate it. And I hate working for this company and shit. I'll, I'll walk away. Um, anyways, our whole life though, has been a progression because we've had the passion for what we're doing and, and it's, it's been so easy for me and yeah, it sucks when 15 people are in the crowd, but it's changing. Like the, the days are definitely changing there. What I, what I will say is, um, and I don't think, I don't think it's like that big of a stretch to say is I think Pat, your trip down to Miami, this could potentially be the biggest week in the company's history to be totally frank. Like who knows what can happen from what this trip is going to be. What, what's, you know, what's an insane thing Mahoney is um, two weeks ago. I had a, a little bit of a pitch. I was like, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to try to sell this film. I'm going to hang out. And it wasn't even about that really. Now I got a fucking $500,000 NFT deal. I have a TV show on the way. It, it, it is it is going to be probably the, talk about sales again, talk about sales, which I studied right before I came down from Alaska, which is such a coincidence. I have the biggest fucking pitch for a movie I've had in my entire fucking life. Hey, so Pat, so tell me and everyone else who's listening or watching this, uh, why Miami again? Um, two years ago, um, two years ago, I was coming down, um, from Alaska and there was a business conference thing that I was really into at the time. It was about, it's all about sales and selling and stuff like that. And it was in January of that year, COVID hit. I couldn't make the conference and everything else. Um, so I'm in Pittsburgh visiting my kids and I just, I just want to do anything at all. Just keep my mind, keep going or whatever. And this same conference comes up again. So I'm like, okay, it's 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 like 33% of the original price and everything else. I'm like, man, I wanted to go to this two years ago. I didn't do it. Now I'm, I'm going to fucking go to it. And, and now I have a movie and everything else. So the first thing they always ask you is, what what is the business you run? What is the business you run? So the first time in my life, I can sit there and tell people, honestly, I'm an independent filmmaker. I have the greatest fucking horror film alive in my back pocket and we have all this momentum going for you who wants to fucking sign this deal and pat how does that feel you just said that to us but how does that fucking feel man how does that feel after 15 years into this 20 years into this how does this how does that feel to say that it feels on fucking believable like i i, I don't know why i i'm a hones knows me really well he knows how i am when i'm actually am who i am and right now I'm a fucking monster. I'm unstoppable. I'm not going to fucking lose. Like, how many bets would you place against me right now, Mahomes? Not many. And I don't want to sound like the old jock right here, but it's it, this is the only comparison I have. Is it's, it's like when Pat was going into uh, state track his senior year, and I just knew even, like, I had my doubts during the race, and I, we can get into that later because it's a hilarious story, but, like, <laughs> Going into the year before the season started, I was like, this kid's going to be a state champion at least once for sure in one race, maybe in another. And I mean, like he says, when he's got his mind on it and that's like, he, he becomes so just hyper-focused. Yeah. It's everyone else is kind of in trouble. And that's what it was like for me in, in divisionals in the, the finals against Pat and the bar. <laughs> say, trouble. So, so one last question to you, Pat, just uh, whatever, just throwing it out there. So are, are you afraid of those like face-to-face old school meetings? Cause now everything's what we're doing right now or. Yeah. No, I, 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 are you not afraid to, you know, get down. Whatever. I, I, don't, I don't know how those conferences are going to work exactly. I, I just have a vision inside my head that I'm going to be able to give, have an open mic to pitch my business or whatever. I just feel that I'm going to have that open opportunity. And, and I feel like right now it's like, okay, that opportunity is going to happen in Miami for sure. A hundred percent. So for me personally, I'm not really worried. It's, it, it's weird. Like you become somebody else. You don't fucking worry about shit like that. You don't think about it. You don't worry. You just go out there and you just do it. I don't know. And this is like, I've worked in sales for so long, Matt, and maybe this guy can help. It's just like, when you do it for so long that like one, one bad experience only motivates you more. It's almost like when you lose a game, you're just like, you just want to go out and get to the next game. For me, that's what sales was always been like, like, all right, I lost this battle, but I can't like, 
who's the next phone call? Who's the next meeting? Like, I can't wait. It's, it's, it's weird. I was just going to throw this out there. So has improv helped you guys? Like, you know, I'm kind of asking a question I already know, but. (laughs) I'm going to ask, but my aunt is right. Like, um, like losing, losing fucking sucks. But if you're if you're playing the game, and this is my biggest regret about Alaska, and I, I I tried to run away, I tried to do the the average guy or whatever and everything else. But when you're in the fucking game, like in sales, losing really sucks. So you rebound the next day, and you're like, okay, I'm going harder the next day. And this is the thing that uh, uh, Mike Freeze, I'm going to tell you this right now, is like uh, Don Bromley. His his classic clothes. He owes me his life. He probably does, honestly. <laughs> but um, when I was in Pittsburgh, I sent out fifteen thousand pitches for Redgate. Fifteen thousand emails. So when people say that, like, like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. I, I, they they talk to five people or something like that. And if you work in sales, like Mahones, you know, you have to talk to thousands of people to make it work. You have to push yourself to that level. You never know Shocking. if you. Yep. Yeah, you, you never know if your shit's good or not. I felt with Don Bramley's photo, I felt with the story, I felt with the pitch, I felt with the celebrities that I talked to online um, that this was a great fucking pitch. I thought this was a great fucking pitch. I really believed in it. And again, my home said, you have to fucking believe in it. And I really 100% believed in this. And we were able to get a deal, uh, uh, pitch it. We got a TV show on the way, and a T deal. We have... There's the last thing is the actual film deal, and the film deal to me is going to be a fucking walk in the park. And and to circle back to the pyramids, do you feel like you're selling a pyramid scheme? So we are <laughs> we are talking about the pyramids here, <laughs> Mike Freeze. Hey, we we have to get to that tonight because I did a fucking shitload of research. <laughs> <laughs> oh god hey you know what like that's like I'll baseball always, cards I'll always attempt to keep us back on track <laughs> hey you know <laughs> let, let, let me say will. one thing um about don bromley I've, I've never met don bromley i've only really met him through the podcast and through you know his conversations with pat um i i talked to somebody in in deer lodge uh about this and um and he knows the bromleys and he had the nicest things to say about that family and so you know, I have it on good authority that that Don is a good guy and that he he is uh, he, he comes from good people and and um, you know his personality is is going to definitely be a, a a big factor for you guys and and you know in the beginning I was always saying that hey you know like this is like <clears throat> a, you know a, a typical Montana redneck guy with a trail cam, you know, and, and he owns that. And, um, and so, you know, that is very much a compliment, especially from where I live, because people are so fucking fake here. Yeah. And, he's, and he's very authentic, Bromley, yeah. like he's a Montana guy, you know, and like you guys are Montana guys and even, you know, Mahoney's way off in the great plains, you know, but he's, he's a Montana <laughs> guy and through and, and through motherfucker the fucking world needs that i mean you know not to be on our high horses here but god damn man there's a lot of fake fucking people in this world and and one thing you're getting with don bromley is authenticity one thing you're getting with pat cutler is authenticity kelly cutler there's a reason why you guys are still doing the same thing because you're authentic matt, yeah matt cutler is authentic Totally. And with that said, uh, I'm actually uh, transgender, Mike. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Penguins just took the lead on the fucking Golden Knights. Four, three Penguins over the Knights. Fuck the Knights. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fuck the Knights. Hey, Mike, you have a, exactly a half an hour to say everything you know about the pyramids, like the sham wow Fuck guy. Fuck you. A half hey. hour? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. We're just getting started. I said, like the sham wow guy. Speak quickly. Yes. <laughs> talk to me talk to me like you're trying to sell flex seal well, wait a second. Yeah, our, our, let's let why don't we close the book on bigfoot shouldn't you show the cowboy guy that was there yeah think, uh we don't got time for the cover going anymore i, I, say, I think that's guy. just going to lead into another 15 minute discussion mm-hmm. man just know that uh you know that there's there's more to the patterson footage than uh than, than you think it's not just a guy in a suit so you Mike, should watch that shit Let's, let's let's actually skip to the pyramid stuff. I have all your photos. 
Hey, um, we'll fucking get to the pyramids in a minute. <laughs> oh Jesus! I want to talk more about Don Bromley. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, go ahead, Pat. Um, no, I was gonna say we can go to the pyramid stuff here. Um, and pull, pull. the pyramid stuff to me, uh, Bigfoot's great. And then, and I don't want to slam Bigfoot fans or anything like this, especially if I go on my fucking alien podcast tour because. I had a guy already warn me. I was like, dude, if you say you don't believe in Bigfoot, there's a lot of people that are going to turn on you. <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be problems hey, if you yeah. don't believe in Bigfoot. Listen to me, man. If you don't, if you don't say chupacabras in my backyard right now, I don't know if this <laughs> thing's working. <laughs> <laughs> That's I just, probably what your uh, producer buddy's going to tell you. He's going to be like, look, just fucking say you believe in Bigfoot, all right? <laughs> Trust God. me. Trust I know. Like pretty soon your show is gonna like after season three it's gonna become a love triangle between you and Don Bromley and Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> to keep, things, keep it spicy. Oh, God, I, I would have loved to have Mahomes at our fucking casting call tonight for uh, the female role in it. It was a fucking <laughs> shit show. It was a complete fucking shit show. Honestly, I I can't tell you how open I would have been. <laughs> to, to zoom it in on that thing dude uh we, we're uh my, mike we are the fucking ghostbusters of alien hunters like we don't take this shit seriously at all <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, um, hey just real quick though um i want to have dibs like can i call dibs on fucking enigma 2 i want to fucking shoot that shit do you really <laughs> yeah if you guys make enigma 2 i want to shoot it because uh I, I know Only just if how I to get shoot a guy with the Safeway bag around his head again. <laughs> that's, that's the only way that movie's happening. Hey, hey my, Mike, Red Gate is Enigma. That's what you're fucking missing, dude. Fuck the pyramid conspiracy. Red Gate that's is Enigma. Dogs, man. Is this, is this going to be one of those series, though? Like, you watch the Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters. So many people are into that shit. I'm sitting there watching. Are they actually going to see something or is something actually going to happen here? You know what I'm saying? How are you going to carry on that narrative unless an alien comes well, down and well, probes thing, your Matt, asshole? That's, <laughs> that's the whole topic of the show, Matt. You never ever catch the damn thing. That's why it's good. Uh, it will keep watching. You know the other thing you guys got going for you is not only do you have all that stuff, but you can play off all the prison stories too. Are you oh, kidding God. me? Like, yeah. Do we have a boatload of stuff we can play off of? Uh, Dude, I'll um, tell you what. My old man's got nothing going on. He'd be happy to jump on camera. <laughs> like, um. You got nothing to do. Let's just put it Uh, this way. So the Blair Witch Project, they had 20 hours of footage, right? And I know that's not even real, but I would sit down and watch every every second of that footage that they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. People out there like that. No, I know exactly what you're saying. Nuts over it. I don't go back to Mahomes. Yeah, your old man. Who wouldn't let me finish my film (laughs) on Montana State Prison property? Yeah, let's let's talk about that, Mahoney. I mean, <laughs> we got more time for pyramids than to talk about that. That's... There's a fucking pyramid. All right, what's okay. going on in this photo, dude? All right, what's going on here, boys? This is current Nikola day Tesla. Egypt, right? This is current day Egypt. Now, Pat, show the photo that I sent right after this, or right before it. The photo, your, the photo, your wiener. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, those pyramids are you right, right before or right after that one. I, I got I got your photos here. I'm gonna go. Those pyramids photos. are 11 miles from Cairo, right? No. Ellie, you can you can They're see right the pyramids. You can see the pyramids from a Pizza Hut in Cairo. <laughs> That's they, not they, a joke. Yeah, oh. I just read a stat. There it is. The pyramids were 11 miles from Cairo. Uh, just read that today. Here, let me. I'll I'll put this in our chat. So this is what the pyramids look like uh, before Christianity, before a lot of shit, way before COVID. Um, They were white. They were gleaming white. They could be seen uh, for, you know, I don't know, as long as, as far as you can see, they were, uh, they had limestone, uh, they had a limestone casing and, uh, I think there's more photos, Pat, but the this isn't entirely accurate. There, the uh, the capstones of all the Great Pyramids, they had a gold capstone on top, so they were gleaming white, and then they and then the tip of them was gold, right? And um, 
though that's one of the you know if you were to google mysteries of the pyramids that's one of them uh what happened to the gold capstones you know and yeah. uh, it's it's really fucking interesting what these things are but the the more interesting thing is why are there pyramids all over the world right um and why do we have this amnesia like why don't we know how these things were built what happened you know and there, there's a lot of evidence not just theories there's a lot of evidence of a global c- catastrophe uh that happened that oh, uh, catastrophe really, what, what are you fucking talking about catastrophe yeah that uh you know wiped out our civilization as we know it and and uh because of the fucking pyramids yes the pyramids were underwater at one point by the way the sphinx was buried in sand for hundreds of years you know the, you know it's so interesting like photographs we we take this shit for granted. We're we're here on fucking Zoom, right? Like this is so fucking crazy. This technology just to be able to talk to each other like this. Photographs, man. Like you're looking at what 1860 was the very first photograph or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So when they first had photographs, they took pictures of the Sphinx, and the then the thing was buried in sand up to its neck. And it wasn't until like the 1900s that they fucking dug it out and they discovered that it was actually a whole sphinx you know yeah that's interesting so what what yeah uh, what the fuck is going on here i guess i want to say (laughs) pat pat looks like he's drunk (laughs) hey so i actually read this thing and honestly it made me think of you mike is i was reading i was reading the news um it was like a local news thing i read the montana standard all the time and um there was this thing like at the bottom it scrolled and it's like uh how tesla thought the pyramids powered the earth and and i'm assuming you know exactly what i'm talking about not only do i know what you're talking about i sent pat the fucking video on tesla thinking that powering the powered shit yeah that's exactly where we're going with this Oh, yeah. um, I didn't mean to lead the witness. But, oh, I'm sorry, uh, my, Mike. I was a little bit hungover as fuck today, so I'm just trying to get through this episode. So please guide me in the right direction here, my savior. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So, um, I, all right. <laughs> all right. So, I sent you a, a bunch of um, photographs, Pat. Right. <laughs> so, how about yes. we just go through all the photographs? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure let's you just did. Go uh... In silence. In silence. Let's just <laughs> scroll through them and then we can discuss. Uh, all right. There's there's all other right. people here, Mike. <laughs> all right. No. <laughs> and like this is a family show. People watch out. <laughs> all right. No, let's go. Let's go, Mike. So what right, photos let's... what photos you want me to pull up of your all of them? Computer. Just fucking scroll through them. All right. So we're gonna pull up this one. Rex Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are about you're you're about to kick off an amazing career <laughs> all right let me, let me pull up this one so what's going on here uh mike freeze what's going on here well this uh relates back to the nikola tesla thing this is uh ah, energy yes yeah so tesla thought that there was a magnetic energy uh that the pyramids were projecting and uh, tesla actually has he built his own facility and i think it was colorado springs on the same uh like parallel that the pyramids were like he was obsessed with with the pyramids if you were to you know google nikola tesla pyramids you know as uh mahons was saying it's it, it is really fucking interesting shit and um and so, yeah, he, he thinks that they had were absolutely an, an energy uh, transmission of some sort. But the thing that's interesting to me is that these pyramids are all over the fucking world and they're all connected. Like they're all like Tesla thought that it wasn't so much the shape of the pyramid itself, but it was the location of where they where, where they are that, that was more 
important than the uh, the pyramid shape. And the pyramid shape is is also important for like fractal energy and shit like that. But but uh, but just the way the Earth is like the way that the earth wobbles back and forth, like every like 72,000 years or whatever. And the fucking Egyptians knew that shit. Like they, they understood that, that the earth fucking wobbled. And, and so they lined the pyramids up like those shafts that are in them. Like when they were made, they were pointing at these two stars and they, and they knew, you know, like that, that, that every, every 72,000 years that, that it would, it would align. And, um, so what do you know, those uh, pyramids, right. like, like how high up, how, how, how can the public go in there or how high up can people go or how high up have people gone? Do they know what's in the entire? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I, I think the, I think the big pyramid, the great pyramid is like 400 some feet tall. Um, and, you know, back in the day, in like the 1800s prior, you could just fucking crawl up the outside of it and get all the way up. There's a YouTube video of some guy doing it nowadays, and he and he fucking got arrested. Like, so if you were to do it now, you'll get arrested by the Cairo police. And but I, I want to talk about uh, uh, Tesla for a second here, Mike. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? Because I've studied Tesla uh, to the nth degree. And Tesla ended up being a fucking broke down bum with no money whatsoever. He died in a fucking hotel room by himself. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about that? Is that the cost of pursuing all these things? Or what do you think about Tesla? I, I love the guy to death, but he ended up being a fucking nobody at the end of the day. And now he's known for a lot of stuff. So what do you think about that? Well, I think Tesla got taken advantage of by Thomas Edison. You know, that's that's pretty uh, well documented that Edison kind of took credit, you know, for a lot of Tesla's not just Tesla, a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Edison was a motherfucker. Like he was he was like he he was like a William Clark, you know, the guy from Butte, the Clark and Daly. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. So but the thing about Tesla is that, you know, he was he wasn't so much into it for himself. He was he had these visions and um, uh, whether he died broke or not, doesn't fucking matter. Right. I mean, uh, he, he wasn't good with managing his life in a certain way. I mean, Einstein wasn't either. I mean, the guy used to walk into trees. I mean, like these guys that are, uh, you know, they, they don't always, um, uh, you know, participate in, in society in, in the way that we think that they ought to. Um, but yeah, so, but to answer your question, I think Tesla lived to be in his eighties. I mean, he was like what, 86 or something when he died. So it it wasn't like he got murdered or anything. I don't, I don't think they like offed him or anything like that, but I, I think for sure he, he was used, you know, and, and if they ever, have they ever made a biopic about him? Um, there's been a couple. I watched one actually on an airplane once uh, about really? Tesla. Uh, it has a uh, fucking uh, train day guy. Not does not watch Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke Hawk yeah. played Nick Ethan Hawke. He plays uh, Tesla. Uh, it, it is. It is a great fucking movie, by the way. That's why I wanted to ask you about that because really? it's it's a great. I should fucking watch movie. that. It's Wait, uh, so t- Tesla. The- t- sorry, Matt. Tesla is right. Ethan Hawke. Um, Thomas Edison is uh, um, Denzel Washington. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Denzel. Be- Benedict Cumberland is uh, Edison. Cumberbatch. 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 Cumberbatch re- or whatever. Remember the was it the Prestige where? Tesla's oh involved? God, the Prestige is fucking amazing movie. Well, that's a Hugh Jackman. That's an amazing movie. I love that movie. Such a fucking good movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they go out to Colorado where Tesla does the electrical stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, way better than better than that Patterson movie. <laughs> so, but there, there's conspiracies on Tesla where it's like he, um, this is one of the biggest conspiracies on Tesla is like he found a way to deliver free energy, and that's why he uh, eventually disappeared. What do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, he definitely 
just discovered pretty much like he's the reason why we are on this call right now he's absolutely the the reason for so much of the electronic revolution right and um but relating to the pyramids um i i i think that just in the time frame of this of this podcast kelly said we have 30 minutes starting now by the way 30 minutes yeah. starting now right <laughs> oh, yeah. you got uh, six seconds left <laughs> <laughs> um i think whatever it is pat i think the pyramids are uh they're for sure an instrument that works upon human consciousness like like however they were built whatever they were built for it was that's what the that's what it was is the, the ancient egyptians were obsessed with the afterlife they were obsessed with you know death they were obsessed with so many things and and obsession you know that's what you're going through with red gate right now it's yeah you're you're gonna make this thing the biggest fucking movie the biggest horror film of all time you gotta be obsessed right and so uh, not, not to cut you off though mike but um um it, it has been an obsession i have done if you watch these podcasts this is where it gets crazy i've done voodoo love spells i've done all this crazy shit because yeah. i just it, it we're on a, a investigation here on this tv show about uh um, all these dark stuff and i've done that dark stuff i have um i contacted a psychic <laughs> uh several psychics and um voodoo voodoo, voodoo. and I, i'm be, i'm gonna be honest with you mike uh they had a pen, uh, it's called a pendulum reading where they do a pendulum thing on the it's yes or no questions. Pendulum, yeah, yeah. They asked me five questions, and um, the yes or no questions, I or I asked them five yes or no questions, and I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, out of the five questions, four of them have come true so far, so we're on to something, it, it is. We are the Ghostbusters of alien investigations. It's a joke and all these things, but there's this yeah. energy and shit you can so feel. You're it. doing some fucking Egypt shit, and you're, yes, you're, you're casting spells and shit. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, there's there's a lot of power out there that that people fucking know about. And yeah, yeah. It's just funny because I I know Mahomes knows that I will fucking do anything to fucking win. <laughs> I mean, you've you've done voodoo. I don't like. I don't. Anyone listening? I don't know that, that you could do any more than that. <laughs> you've legitimately done voodoo, not like in a ha ha. I'll see it. Out. Like no, you did voodoo. Like yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I said I want to do the number one horror film of all time. I never thought it would lead me down the path of voodoo. <laughs> See, Pat, Pat hopscotched the question, whose dick do I have to suck? Pat just hopscotched right over it. Yeah. He's like, I don't care. I don't, I'm not sucking anything. Like, straight to voodoo. How much, how much do I have to pay some person in New Orleans to get me to where I need to be? I can tell you whose dick you should start with, Don Bromley's. <laughs> it's so weird, though, and so bizarre at the same time that, um, we talked about these voodoo stuff through the Prince League podcast over and over and over again. And now these bizarre fucking things are starting to happen. How shocked are you, Mahones? Honestly, not at all. <laughs> um, again, it's, it's not so like it's this combination of things. It's like, I don't, I'm like I said, I'm not a contradiction. I'm a walking contradiction. Like we all are. I just am aware of it. Um, <laughs> and so I believe in a bunch of things that I, I shouldn't, and I don't believe in things that if, if you listen to the stuff I believe in, you'd be like, yeah, I should probably believe in that. Um, but then it's also like, you're doing voodoo in Deer Lodge, and it's just, I know what happens in Deer Lodge. I, I grew up there. <laughs> like we, we are the epicenter of the weirdest stuff in the world to happen for a town of 2,000 people. So, no, I'm not surprised that it's working. Um, I'm honestly more surprised that you didn't try voodoo earlier. <laughs> but yeah he's he a good point though uh there mike um i have done a lot of things and, and i've done it 
honestly solely because I want to see this horror film go off. That's it pretty much. And it's working. It's working. A little bit of voodoo, you know, a little bit of dark stuff, right? We're okay, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let like let, let me ask Matt, Matt and Kelly. <clears throat> Do you guys think it's fucking interesting that there's these goddamn pyramids out there and nobody fucking knows who built them? Or nobody knows, like, like it's just a fucking mystery, and like nobody fucking knows. Like, like, what do you guys think about that? I, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know, man. I, <laughs> I guess I, I'm really, a, I'm a curious person, you know. It's that's instilled deep in me, but uh, I, I don't know why they haven't done more research or why answers haven't come forward on things like this. I just think that. Um, I don't think we know our history at all, you know, and it's like funny because it's, you know, people destroying history now because of racism and all that. But it's like, I don't think we fucking know our history whatsoever, maybe a hundred years ago or 200 years ago, but a thousand years ago, 2000 or more, we don't know shit. And I just think that like mankind has been wiped off the face of this earth and, and come back probably infinity amount of times this this planet probably was something like mars once and it's probably been something like the earth uh i i just i just think that um i don't know i i just think that if we really knew the truth about our entire history it would blow everyone's fucking minds and i'm not surprised that we have pyramids on this earth i i don't i wish i knew the answer but i'm not surprised at fucking anything that, that's discovered let me keep that to matt matt what do you want to weigh in on that uh yeah about the pyramids i guess that can categorize that in a bunch of uh other things like uh like you said bigfoot and all this other stuff um not necessarily it's not true but i'm saying god there are so many things out there like the pyramids and other shit like noah's ark where like where they landed and all this other stuff that's from the ancient time period and man you just want to go there and see it but if you dive down uh, the rabbit hole of, you know, the pyramids or whatever you're, you're looking for, I think that's just a totally different ball game compared to what we have here. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd love to just book a plane ticket and go see all this shit. But it's like, God, the rabbit holes there are unbelievable. Yeah, I want to kick this question to Mike uh, Mike again. And we go on these big rabbit holes. Like, man, what do you think about quantum jumping? Like I, I fell asleep on an airplane from Pittsburgh to Denver and I woke up with plane tickets from somebody else in my pocket Mm -hmm. and I, I, I didn't get my bags for like seven days. It's the most, one of the most bizarre experiences in my entire life. Do you think quantum jumping and quantum leaping into parallel realities and parallel dimensions? What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, Hey, I mean, if you believe what science says that we're fucking, uh, circling around a giant ball of fire, you know, suspended in outer space, the Big Bang. I mean, it's all fucking wild, man. Like that movie, The Matrix, you know, really was a moment in time where it was just that that perfect storm of like, um, you know, everybody kind of got like, maybe they didn't all get it, but they all understood something about about the construct maybe we're in in a simulation like pat saying quantum jumping time they just said recently that um that the speed of light they used to think the speed of light was a constant but that it was always this fucking speed of light but no turns out the fucking they think this now they think the speed of light is slowing down which fucks everything up because think about it how the fuck is it almost february of 2022 the fuck out of here what happened to 2017 like shit is going by so fast and it's not just that we're getting older it's like yeah we're getting older but time is going by so fucking fast yeah mike there's crazy shit going on mike i think 2017 is what i call the mushrooms era (laughs) (laughs) um i I, I, want to say this really quick um mike have you seen the latest matrix movie you know what, man? Like I was all about it. I, I got in trouble at my work at HR. Remember that shit? I got turned. Yeah. In. Somebody fucking turned me in for talking about it. Oh um, yeah, 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 yeah. Lena yeah. Wachowski is her name now. 
Yeah, yeah. I, all I said was it's the Wachowski sisters now instead of the Wachowski brothers, you know? And somebody fucking turned me in. That's I'm the t- world t- we t- live t- in right now. I'm, t- I'm telling you, though, uh, you, you should watch the latest Matrix movie. Like, everybody should. Yeah. It, it really makes you think about a lot of fucking things. Of course. We yeah. talk about Quan jumping, uh, parallel rallies, things of that nature. Watch the latest Matrix movie. It, yeah. it makes you... So I was in Pittsburgh, and uh, thank God I had a great experience. I had my kids with me, and I took them to back-to-back movies, Spider-Man and the Matrix, and I was explaining the Matrix to my kids. And we saw... The second night, we saw the Matrix together. And God, I'm going to tell you right now, it's it's great. It makes yeah. you fucking think. Yeah, I'm a fan, dude. I, I'm a big fan of of, of those guys or gals. Was it, was it, it, it makes you think it, it's great, Mike, because it's like, you know, guys or gal. It yeah. makes you think like, was was all of it fake? Was the whole thing fucking fake? That's what it makes you think. It's like, okay, this whole thing was fucking fake. Well, I fake, can tell right? you the moon landing was fake. <laughs> If I can tell you that right now, I'll fucking prove it to you. I mean, if you're looking for a reaction, you're not going to find it. <laughs> That's the reaction I'm, we wanted. <laughs> I'm as I'm as dead inside as Nikola Tesla was when he now, was. Now wait a second, wait a second. Hey, Mark, Mark. Let, let me ask you something. You are, <laughs> let's just say, would you consider yourself to be a a integral part of the prison Prison City podcast? Like, if Prison City podcast was a business, you would be you know, a partner, right? I, I, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> okay. Could it, so, could it, could it exist without me? A hundred percent. Bullshit. No, I don't think no. it could. Shouldn't no, that mean no, that it's bullshit. fucking mandatory for you to watch our great moon landing episode where we filmed in the studio? I think it should be mandatory <laughs> that Mark watches it at least. Hey, hey, Mahomes, how, watch it. You, you watched that episode, right, Mahomes? Uh, how many views does it have? <laughs> I'm I, I I heard you didn't watch it. I, that's of just, course I didn't fucking watch. I'm never gonna fucking watch. <laughs> I just think it should be mandatory as a partner. You should fucking. Be aware. Of I didn't as fucking partner, watch. I, sub- I subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> and I play it through with no volume on because I hate listening to my own voice. Um, <laughs> but I I do my best to get our views up. You know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> hey, hey Mahoney, watching that episode is like uh, Keanu Reeves doing the newest Matrix movie. It's the same fucking thing. Watch, <laughs> watch, watch that fucking Matrix movie, man. It, it's fucking, it, it's weird. It's so good. I love it. I love that. So, love so <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, and Matt, what you guys said about your thoughts on what the pyramids are, isn't it interesting that we don't know what the fucking pyramids are? but we're still fighting each other over skin color like oh e- elon musk is going to take us to fucking mars but we don't know who built the pyramids like like isn't that interesting it's just a weird world that we live in that's like oh yeah uh we're going to mars but you know the pyramids yeah we don't really know who built those or what that's all about you know nikola tesla the guy that's responsible for Elon Musk, Tesla, all that shit. It's Elon Musk companies called Tesla. Okay. Ah, oh, damn it. You beat me to it. But fucking, you know, yeah, Tesla was obsessed with the pyramids, but no, we don't, we don't really know about that. But, you know, we're going to go terraform Mars and, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. Do you guys think that there's some kind of a deception going on that actually we don't know fuck all, maybe? Like no, maybe, I, I, well, I like, think we think do. Huh? I think we. I think we know. I think um, the powers that be that do do know everything, like the secrets of the world or whatever, are known by someone or some entities. But they keep it from us for whatever fucking reasons. But it's like you can't figure out why the pyramids are here, but we can dissect an atom or or make nuclear weapons or do all mm. this crazy fucking shit. I just don't buy it. I believe that we have the right brains the right personnel the right intelligence in this world somewhere and they keep us at war so we don't get on the same page for whatever reason i don't understand it but it's like man if we just put all of our heads together on this planet and we didn't fight wars and shit i, I would just be we, we could do amazing crazy fucking things and we totally understand where we live and why we live here and everything so yes i think there's a, a definite deception going on to keep us from knowing things for whatever reason that we also don't know 
Yeah. Mahomes, what do you think about that? I don't disagree. I think uh, we know way more than we'll ever know. And I, I made my peace with that a long time ago. Um, you know, you, you've heard me say this, Mike. I'm, we are in the middle and we'll always be in the middle because we are not rich and powerful or we're not connected enough or whatever. Um, and that's why I believe in aliens and I believe in ghosts and I believe in all these other things because I think there's way more to this. And that's just the when you think of the like enormity of just where we are in the universe, like we're on this rock that's circling around a, a star that's on fire in the middle of like, I saw something today or maybe it wasn't today. Maybe it was in this week that the, like the Milky way is like 0. 0.000 something percent of the visible universe. And to think mm-hmm. that we're all that there is, is just arrogance at its highest level. Um, so yeah, there's more out there than we'll ever know. And would I like to know it? Sure. Do I understand that there's a ton of people, whether it's hardcore religious people that couldn't understand, you know, sure, probably, but I'd still like to know. Um, it, yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I fully agree. And that's why me and Kelly get along so much. I think we're both curious enough and I've, Kelly, we're, Hello. Hello. God damn it. Hello. Pat, can you hear us? Yeah, sorry. My bad. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's my internet, by the way. Sorry. You Kelly is curious. 13,000 seats. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, not that. I just no. think we'll never know. We'll never know. That's the reality of it. Hey, we'll hey, never hey, know. Mark, Mahomes, can I ask you one question, though? And this is a, a real sincere question. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you not concerned about, di- like, uh, whether you... God damn it. Shit. All right. Wait, Pat Hold swearing on. at you, or yeah. if he's swearing at his yeah, internet. I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no, sorry, no, I'm pissed. The fucking internet here. Sorry, go ahead with your question. This is fucking. Well, but so but dumb. to me, that always bothered me a lot. That oh, we're they're they're lying to us. Why the fuck are they keeping this from us? Whether it's aliens, whether it's well, maybe they really know what the pyramids are or the moon landing shit. What? But like like my my brother Matt Freeze seems to be content with you know just buying whatever they say and and i'm like hey maybe he's okay with it because like and i, I want to ask you this like if you're being deceived is that your end all be all or do you not like does that not bother you so much because it's like who gives a shit if we're being deceived you know what I, I, mean? I know we are for sure because look at what happened in the middle of the pandemic we start to everyone starts to be like oh yeah get, you know governments everywhere are like you know ufos are actually real and we don't know where <laughs> these things came from and it's just kind of like swept under the rug and it was met with pretty much a global just like yeah all right yeah, you know like what should have been if you could imagine 10 15 years ago that this was like yeah no we don't know where these things are coming from these are not like could you imagine how crazy that would have been and now people are just like whatever um so i'm sure the wool's being pulled over eyes and i'm not comfortable with it i'm just i've made my peace with the fact that it's i'm never i'm never gonna be in the circle that knows i think there like, has to there has I to be a I fine know. line um mike to also answer your question there has to be a fine line of like yeah we all know we're being deceived you have to you have to know that and admit it and maybe do a little research you're never going to find the answers or as many of the answers as you'd like but at least you can like look into it and see what might make sense to you but there also has to be a fine line of not 
becoming a wacko quack job, you know, like some of these guys have done yeah. in these conspiracy rabbit holes, you know, and that's where I'm at. Like, I don't want to fucking lose sleep over this because like, there's nothing I can do about it anyways, but I'm not going to pretend like it's not happening. But I want to add on a, onto that and kick it to Mike here and, and be like, um, okay. So with Mahone's, what he said, it was, it was very true. Um, but I think, um, without a doubt, the government has had the stance of like, well, if we tell these people that aliens exist or UFOs have happened, they're going to lose their minds and the whole society is going to just go crazy. So what do you think about that, uh, Mike? Like, like they have kept these secrets from us because they are, they're afraid of how we're going to react to it. Well, I, I think, what would I do in that situation? You know what? I'd probably do the same fucking thing. People are fucking stupid, man. Like, you wouldn't want to tell people. Like, people actually can't handle the truth. I mean... What, like like your brother, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. God, he, he'd you know be laughing. You know what? You can't handle the truth. Oh. I don't know. Uh, I, I we gotta do an episode with you and Matt on here because Matt, Matt, oh God bless him. He's fucking fun. Oh, you, Matt, you guys, you guys yeah. are both fun. You guys are both fun as fuck. Dude, but Matt will not listen. I mean, he's a science teacher. I respect the shit out of him. You know, any teacher, right? I yeah. I grew up with teachers in my life. Hey, where where the fuck is uh <laughs> your brother? Where Matt, the fuck uh, is Matt, Matt Cutler's off. Uh, he, his phone died. Oh, his phone uh, died? Oh, so, yeah. So, uh, Mahomes, we we're talking about bringing Matt Freeze on here to debate Mike Freeze. <laughs> that would be good. I don't even, like, I don't even need to think it needs to be a debate. I just think it would be a super interesting show. <laughs> just it like, would kind of be a shit show. If Matt be, and I don't, be, don't agree on any of this. Uh, you know I, what would be the ultimate show? Is you get you two, and then you get your dad with his History Channel stuff going, and just like <laughs> our that's... dad has drifted quite a bit in the last twenty years, but um, but that would be really interesting. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to do a part three of the uh, pyramids here, and actually, well, hey, 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 Matt, the hey, Pat, talking about that. Pat, why don't you just just scroll through the photos that I sent you, and and we'll just comment at at will. All right, all right. are we doing this? Are we yep. doing this? My my phone is plugged in and it just sent me 10%. But okay. yeah, we'll we'll do it. We got we got 10%. <clears throat> uh, you, I, you said, I mean I you know said, what I'm talking about. They're not a couple of photos. You said like 27 photos. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it, let's, it takes, let's round the photos. It, it takes 67 seconds to scroll through 27 photos. Everyone knows that. <clears throat> Uh, all right. geez, that sounds all like right. big business to me all right Mahones, are you ready for these fucking photos leave me up the goods i'll just give you my my i'll try and give it to one to two word reactions all right here we go here we go all right so the first photo here folks we're gonna look at the first photo here there you go Okay. Nipple. What are you looking at here? <laughs> Nipple. What are you that, looking at here? That is a handbag that is that shows up consistently, not only in Egypt, but in South America. Uh, they found a reason to carve this fucking handbag. So go ahead and scroll, Pat. Or did you not download them all? Do you have to download them all? No, I had all, uh, trust, uh trust me, I download them all. Uh, what um <laughs> What is the uh, inscription on this photo? Like, what are they saying? Well, on nobody that? fucking knows. Like, it's this fucking handbag, and it shows up not only in ancient Egypt, but at Guebekli Tempe, this underground city that they dug up. That's 13. It was buried on purpose 13,000 years ago. And on the pillars, they find these fucking handbags. Like, people just holding this fucking handbag. It's really weird. All right. And so those, to me, that looks exactly like a bucket full of water. Is the first thing I thought. Not necessarily handbag. Well, yeah. the, the, skept, the, like, like the skeptic the weighs in. The skeptic weighs in. I'm, I'm not. Even, I'm told. I'm told you. I'm going to give you my first blush reaction. I'm I, not. This is just me being me. Hey, you said one word, so you should have just said bucket. <laughs> bucket. You know. Okay. Actually, I said one or two words. So fuck it. Bucket. Okay. Fuck it. Bucket. Let's go, let's go to the next, next photo, photo here. Next photo. 
Okay. Hey, look, it's that fucking handbag again. Isn't that weird? Jesus Christ, the handbag shit. Fucking what the weird. fuck is that about? And now what's up with the fish? Oh, that's a fucking handbag, Mahomes. That, Come on. That uh, you know what? Handbag. Okay, you know what's handbag. crazy? That guy looks just like Don Bromley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a shell of you right back. What if what if Don Bromley is like an ancient Egyptian who fucking came back here right at this time in, in history, you know? Because that was a he long time ago. We're we're talking yeah. twenty five hundred BC. That's a long fucking time ago, right? dude. He no. might be a time traveler. You don't really know anything about your neighbors, you know. Like one of uh, Scott Grazier, who just passed away. We had uh, friends of ours tell us that he was a time traveler. Like, like what? If, what if he was? Or what if they what are if aliens? Was? Or what if? What if they are not humans? You know, you'd never fucking know. And I got. I got you know, we, we can't see how small anything is. Like, we can't see the smallest things that exist. And then we can't see, you know, out in the universe past a certain point. So we can't see the biggest things that exist. I think everything, not, how do I put this? It doesn't sound like I'm on fucking crack. But I think everything is tiny and everything is huge. And we are on this earth, which could be a piece of, of dust that is on someone's fucking hat, you know. And we are the biggest things and the greatest creations out there. And we are the smallest things and the most insignificant all at the same time. I think yeah. about that a lot. And it's very fucking interesting to me that, that we really don't know shit. <laughs> no, we don't, Honestly, we don't. The least surprising thing anyone has ever told me, like if I found out on my deathbed that like, Hey, Scott Grazer actually came from 1830s Montana. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, of, of, of course he did. <laughs> of course you did. All right, what the fuck oh, is look, this? It's What's that this? fucking handbag again. Isn't that fucking weird? Jesus oh, Christ. Well, this, see, Why do they the keep drawing this? I mean, like somebody took the time to chisel that shit out of stone. Oh, like Mike, that was Jesus like titty fucking Christ, man. <laughs> but that was really important to them. This is on a giant fucking wall in Egypt, Kelly. You're saying you want to go to Egypt? Guess what? If you go to Egypt, you're going to see a lot of fucking handbags. And why is it? It was like it was their version of the the fossil wallet that each kid had when they were. (laughs) It was really important. It was like the no the no fear wallet I had in junior high. Isn't that interesting? This really is just um I I'm not gonna lie um Mike I thought we had better evidence than uh, fucking handbags. Well, 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 but hold on a second. (laughs) Like, like honestly. I really let's go through another, every photo. I, I want another handbag to be in the next picture. I'm <laughs> if, if I don't have in, a fucking I'm handbag. invested in the handbags at this point. All right, here, just a second here. Kelly took a break here, but let's go to the next. Are we done? Oh, Sorry. you'll just edit it. I'll, I'll edit the fuck out of this. Edit that and post. <laughs> All right, so next photo. Next photo. Here we go. Holy oh. shit. The oh, no, that one Look at the handbag. That's a bucket. That's a bucket. It's a handbag of the bucket. Okay. Maybe. Maybe it's a bucket. He's holding a potato in a bucket of but water. But it's fucking weird. Isn't, that, water isn't water. that fucking weird? Like, like these guys are carving this shit into. Do you know how hard it is to carve a relief into a goddamn slab of stone? Like, that's really fucking difficult. Like, why? Why is it so important that they're holding on to this one fucking thing? This what fucking is handbag. That this fucking handbag, man. It's something. I, it. I don't disagree that it, it. It's important for some reason, but right. Like I said, it could hey. just be the the no fear wallet of its day. Hey, Mahomes, your Virginia's lying in that handbag. <laughs> it's, it must be still hey, there, even Kelly, though I'm a Kelly. Fuck. We have seventeen minutes and counting. We're 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 gonna get through all these photos. God damn! I don't... You got negative seventeen minutes. <laughs> you got you have to talk backwards for seventeen minutes. All right, <laughs> all right, guys. There's no handbag here. There better fucking be a handbag. I'm and I'm in too deep at this point. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> oh shit! This you already handbag. showed me that one. Another fucking handbag. Isn't that weird? Hey, it looks like it's he has same... a fucking giant nutsack too. Jesus it's Christ! The same... the is, it, is that a is that a pine cone or a potato on a hand? Well, that's a pine cone, and and people think that that's the pineal gland. The uh... the pineal gland. No, no, that that that's a real thing. Like in your forehead, 
it, if you guys hold your finger to your forehead, you'll you'll feel some energy there. That's your pineal gland, and it's shaped like a pine cone. So that was they were obsessed about that also. And the pine go- hey. cone goes in the handbag. I, I think no, this goes, handbag goes in thing. The this handbag thing's quite the cliffhanger to leave us off for the next uh pyramid. he has some nice fucking groom nails doesn't he <laughs> those are some nice nails on the handbag hey the handbag Mahomes. okay pat so get get to the fucking better photos Come the on. better photos all you all you are, sent are you me looking at all the photos you sent me nothing but handbag photos <laughs> what do you want me to go i i better see more bucket photos before on, i go to sleep <laughs> The handbag is just an appetizer. All right, here we go. Here's a no handbag. Oh, oh. shit. Buckets more for- more of the handbag. So look, the things that they were holding on to are, are the, that same shape. This is Quebec Le Tempe. This is the city that was buried for 13,000 years. These these are the pillars that they are now unearthing in Turkey. And those little car things on top, that's people are arguing that those are the, Whatever those fucking things are that they're hanging on to, that's what those are. Handbags. Next photo. What if they're Model Ts? I mean, that'll fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right, next photo. Here we go. Wait, I already showed that one. If this is a handbag, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> Why don't you go to the good way? I might shit in the handbag. Go to the first photos I showed you, Pat. All right, here we go. The suspense is killing me. Why? Why is it taking so long to click on these photos? It's a. It's. It's all theatrics, man. It's in his porn file. He's got to sift through a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, whatever you went one way, I went another way. That's that's the beauty of friendship. <laughs> hey, hey, some, somehow we've been here for a week. Welcome hey, to yeah. the Prison City <laughs> Podcast. No. So uh, uh, while Pat has officially missed his flight to Miami. Yeah. <laughs> while while Pat's pulling up photos, how about that Josh Allen, man? I fucking told you guys. You know what? And I drafted him. I, w- I was in a playoff fantasy league and I drafted him <laughs> and he fucking <laughs> tore it up for me. Handbag. No more handbag, Pat. Handbag. I sent, other, I, I sent you other stuff. There's your fucking handbag, dude. Okay. <laughs> Pat, are you able Do to see the photos though? that I sent you, or are they just files? No. I. Oh, shit. You sent me a bunch of stuff. All right, I know stuff. I did. You're focusing on, on, on one interesting aspect. The handbag. Hey, Mahoney. there's more stuff. I want to hear at least 30 minutes of Mahoney weighing on the handbag. Yeah. Give me a moment. So, so what is your take on the handbag thing, Mike? Why do you think they show up all over the place? I, that's the thing, man. Is like whatever it is, like Mahoney said, it's really important because it's in carvings, not just in Egypt, but in South America, in India. It's like in Turkey. It's like whatever the fuck they're holding on to is really goddamn important, mm. and it's really interesting, you know. And I think. I think sometimes, I think, was it you? It must have been you. We talked about the simplest answer is typically the answer. Uh, is like, what's the most important thing in life? Water. It's a fucking water bucket. That's what it is. Mm. Interesting. Jesus. Interesting. Uh, Mike, I, some of the, the images you show me are, are kind of perverted. <laughs> Pat, what, what are you drinking? <clears throat> I really want some of whatever you're having. Here, here. I'll, I'll show the next one. He's got me here. Just a second. Hey, Pat, I didn't fucking make these. This shit's carved on walls in Egypt. If you were to go to Egypt, you would see this shit. This is history, Pat. All right, so this is history. Your fucking cock on my phone is history. <laughs> here we go. Look at that. Oh. Breast fitting. Oh, what guy. do we got here? A guy's getting oh, breastfed. Oh, this is a family show. Yeah, so you know it. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the Egyptians were weren't um, you know weren't very uh, shy about their sexuality. 
right? Yeah, right, Mahomes? I would just say that, you know, however you want to feed your child, whether it's bottle or breastfeeding, I... That doesn't look like a child. (laughs) That Uh, looks like somebody somebody about to motorboat. No, that's a 56-month-old child. I would say it's probably like 156 months old, but I'm not here to judge. Um, you know, things were so different back then. The, the life experience. Yeah, right. Things, things were different back then. It's just interesting that they, they carve this shit into the walls. And if you're a tourist, you can see this shit. And this shit is like, like 2500 BC. This is like yeah. 2000 years before Christianity. Like you also, little, got, um, that, you also that. got to remember that like they had literally nothing else to do so like yeah, <laughs> yeah this right? would be like us if we were just you know sending nudes to someone but instead we didn't right. have nudes we just but, had, but uh, isn't that interesting so it, it turns <laughs> out that uh mm. you know they they had one up on 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 Pornhub, even. I mean, they were etching the shit into the walls. That guy has a gigantic boner. Is that what you want to see? Maybe they exaggerated a little bit. I don't know. Hey, he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to send you a dick pic here. It takes (laughs) him three weeks to chisel it. (laughs) But he wants to etch it for 5,000 years. Like, we, for 5,000 years, we've had to see this. So, that guess what? (laughs) Guess what he did is he did OnlyFans without the subscription. That's what he did. <laughs> so so yeah. that guy, that guy has a boner. That's your point in that photo. That's not my point. I mean, <laughs> if, if you go to Egypt, Pat, you will see that. So, guys and, with boners in Egypt. Yeah, and that's a giant pine cone behind him. That that's interesting. That that's weird. It is weird. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next. One. Is it time to round the boners yet? <laughs> I feel like the horses are gone. I don't know. <laughs> the horses already went to bed. <laughs> the horses went to bed I, a while ago. I feel like I sent you more photos Pat, than that one. I don't know why you feel uh, Let's just go on this one. Okay. Hey, check it out. Those are the gold capstones <clears throat> that are now missing. So somebody's got that fucking thing in their basement, right? Like so those a are giant... Stolen? Yeah, so they think that the uh, gold capstone is about nine nine feet tall. So somebody has a fucking <clears throat> nine foot tall gold pyramid, you know, in their storage wars, right? It's like an episode of Storage Wars where someone uh, bids on a storage locker and the, they got the capstone of the uh, of the Great Pyramid. But that's super interesting because it over the last millennia all of those white stones have been stripped off the pyramids and they've been used to build temples in the city of Cairo. They've been shipped all over the world. You know, people have, have uh, stripped these magnificent monuments and um, they've stolen most of the shit, right? Stolen it. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. That's really weird. Yeah, but so, Nikola Tesla fucking knew what, what was going on Tesla, with those gold tips, yep. the gold capstones. Yep, Tesla knew what he was doing. Okay, let's run this whole uh, project up and get out of here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I, I sent Pat a bunch of fucking images, and turns out there's there's a lot of provocative images that are carved on the walls in Egypt. But I think it's interesting because they've been there for 5,000 years. So for us to talk about it, we're talking about history. And oh why would they choose to fucking do that? Why would they choose to carve that shit on walls, you know? What do you think those gold capstones are worth? Are they pure gold or oh do we know? Oh, God. They, dude. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, imagine a, a nine-foot pyramid of solid gold in your living room. Like, how would you even fucking steal something like that? You gotta have balls of fucking gold. I mean, yeah. like, like, <laughs> I mean, obviously they would have to find a way to push it off and roll it down. They got, you know, and then they'd have to, you know, what? They would have to Patrick Cutler it. They'd have to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need been- more camels. Oh god, more camels. <laughs> no, it's it's been a great show. Uh 
uh, so far. The the baseball cards, <laughs> the pyramids, um, all this rinky dink shit, or whatever you want to talk about. Uh, I'll have you know that uh, your audience, Pat, uh, you you are censoring your audience, and you're doing them a very good service of not showing them yeah. more Egyptian dick pics. Yeah, I know <laughs> they uh, they want more dick dick pics for sure. Um, Bigfoot photos, uh, the whole nine yards. Ken Griffey cards uh, when he was a little boy. Um, <laughs> oh, were you guys talking about Ken Griffey Jr. earlier? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, I actually Mahomes actually prepared very hard for this show. I really? did it. I did it as a joke to say we're new baseball card shows, and he sadly, I, I apologize. He actually really, really prepared for the show. I really wanted to make this about baseball cards because he has a connection to baseball cards. Mahone, do you want to talk about that? Uh, not anymore. I sure don't. Thanks so much. Um, what I will say is uh, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> so somehow Mahone's is still on with us just talking pyramids. Hey, pretty swing never, in baseball. I, I've always said from Jr. the very beginning, I'm a good sport. <laughs> hey what about that little uh what that that pouch or whatever what the fuck is that thing called <laughs> don't what ask me man about? ask the motherfuckers that carved it five thousand years ago hey did hey, you hear? i think that's what they carried their weed in <laughs> i think it's what they carried their lippers in bro oh. I, was like, I think I think Mahomes got his uh, uh, wife that exact same pouch for uh, Christmas not too long ago. <laughs> it's super pouch. fucking expensive. Yeah, we got it from Kate Spade. Sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. <laughs> Do you want to buy a pouch? <laughs> I actually got her a bucket from Home Depot, and then I chiseled it in the side of the house. Hey, I'm serious. I think we need a, a third pyramid you know episode because the first time we didn't even talk about it this time we didn't get to it till the last half an hour so i think we need to do it well yeah well, I, I need to send pat no other the, the really footage in making what you're saying and the stuff, photos but. ahead of time so so he has them ready to go you know yeah but i mean because because you can go off on baseball cards and bigfoot and all that but if we <laughs> if we actually sit down and and do this kind of like the uh moon landing one at the theater I, i'd love to hear like all your yeah. shit on it it's just it shouldn't be the end of a already long podcast you know well this podcast to me was all about redgate i mean the shit we talked about about you what, oh, yeah. what you guys are doing i mean that's Would really what, what it is is you know this other stuff is just periphery you know but it's like you guys are on a fucking freight train right now and that's and that's probably what all your podcasts are, are going to be about at the core is where you're at at this point in time you know and we just got a really cool photo in our red gate chat about the red gate thing. Like, god jackie is fucking hot dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah pat and uh pat don and i and uh sounds like our new uh person on the show jackie right bounce I, I just got to trust whatever you guys say. I'm I'm not in there making decisions, but yeah, whatever's best for the show. All right, I'm pretty fucking wasted at this point. So, uh, let's <laughs> hey Pat, show. you still haven't said what are you drinking tonight? Ah, uh, I was drinking uh, Captain uh, Morgan and Coke. <laughs> I did a little vodka and orange juice at the uh, Elmer's Bar, and I'm doing a uh, fucking. Uh, God, what is it? Uh, <laughs> fireball now. It's fireball. Oh my God. Fireball. All right. That's where we're good. All right, guys. Let's end this. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just all leave or what? <laughs> yeah. I don't think we need to round the horses. No one's still listening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> let's ra- let's run the horses starting with Mahones. Uh, Matt's Matt's no longer here to run the horses, so we'll start with Mahones. Hey, Matt sent Matt sent me a statement though. If you want me to read it, please do. It just says you can all go suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's so hard to follow a statement that's so eloquently stated like that. Um, but I'll do my best. Um, I think it's best for us all to remember that we don't know anything about anything, no matter how much we think we know. 
And after all of that <laughs> being said, um, you know, be open to new opportunities and make sure you go see Redgate when it comes out in theaters. Thanks so much. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I uh, just want to thank our um, you know, our guest, Mike, for coming on. You're a very interesting feller. I really do think we should, you know, try to focus on a simply just um, pyramids because I, I want to hear more, and I know you got way, way more. We're just scratching the surface. But uh, I'll just end with um, what I say a lot of is just stay curious, my friends. Anybody that's listening out there, just stay curious about everything. It's okay to be curious. Obviously, we're natural, curious beings, and I don't know why you would not want to question something or find out more about something, but just don't do it to the point where you're losing your fucking mind because <laughs> it yeah. can become unhealthy. Don't, don't, uh, Mike Freeze, don't do it to a point where you're literally filming a fucking TV show on a ranch about hunting aliens. <laughs> then you're then you're a little bit out of control. Uh, Might be too much by then. Might be too yeah. much by then. Yeah. Mike Freeze, your last statement. <laughs> uh yeah, my last statement is would be just uh you know, it has been a, a pleasure to uh be involved in the uh the steal from Mahoney where we thought it was he thought it was something and then we turned it into a conspiracy show that was pretty funny <laughs> uh, and then the, the only thing i'll say about the pyramids is think about our country boys and girls we're what how old's our country 246 years maybe maybe is that is that how old our, our country is i don't Guess know what? I, i'm not great at math these carvings we were looking at are like five thousand years old you know so I mean, that's the thing is that with social media, whatever, we need to have a bigger perspective of, hey, man, like, like not only has shit come before us, but like thousands of years before Christianity, right? And, and I think that's the key to moving forward is like, oh, wait a minute, like, like maybe we're not fucking going to Mars right now. Maybe we're not, you know maybe we should just pay attention to maybe we should just chill out and realize that that uh the world is playing the long game that's all yeah and i i agree sorry go ahead kelly i just said well put yeah a great show tonight guys my final statement is go fuck yourself 